Oh, yeah, Bulls, like, ha Bulls had a playoff game against the Hawks that night. I guarantee, oh my God. I guarantee you it was on. I guarantee it. At a bare minimum, somebody came in at some point and was like, hey, it's 92-87. Knock on the door. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. President, it's 92-95. It's the fourth quarter. Mm. Mm. All right, we're back. It's macrodosing. It's Thursday. It's June 29th. This summer, this summer's already going by, guys. Make the most of every single day. That's my message to myself for the summer. Um, we didn't address this on nano dosing, but we should have. I just pulled this back up. Um, Big T was featured on Nashville Sports Radio, 105 The Zone. And they said, and I quote, Big T was a pretty quiet guy. Now he's just funny. Big T is very funny. Big T is now certified stamped by Sports Radio 104.5 The Zone in Nashville. Just funny. Big T. That's a great description for you, buddy. That was a uh, that was a college classmate of mine. It's actually – Arian, you played with Ramon Foster, right? Yeah. So it was – that show is two – a college classmate of Arian's and a college classmate of mine – uh, and they were discussing something about Arian or Ramon Foster said something like, oh, don't bring that up around Arian on his podcast or whatever, talking about conspiracies or something. And then the other guy, Will Bowling, was talking about, I forget exactly what he said. I'd have to go back and listen to the clip. But and then Will Bowling, a guy that I went to school with, I was like, you know, I went to school with the other guy. I don't think we've ever talked at all, but uh, he seemed like a fine enough guy. Yeah, but like guy ju journalism is a small major, so like you have pretty much all your classes with most of the same people, so you recognize them even if you don't like hang out with them. Big T, when did you become? When did you transform from a journalist into a journalist hater? Uh, I'm not a journalist hater. I'm a bad journalist hater. Okay, but when you were in journalism school, you love journalism, right? I still do when it's done well. What are it, what are your first three stops when you're looking for good journalism? Uh, fair, balanced, and uh, interesting. Yeah, but where do you go? Oh, like publications? Yeah. I mean, I don't have any that I necessarily like read religiously. Let me throw a couple at you. Uh-huh. New York Times. No chance. Daily Beast. Well, that's not journalism. Uh, well, some might say that they've got some good writers there. Uh, yeah, some might. Some might say that. What about what about the New York Post? Um, uh, that's not really journalism either. That's like, that's kind of more what we do. I got you. All right, Daily Wire. Oh, good people over there. Good folks. Man, good that <laughs> no, that's good stuff. No, they. That's good, fair, balanced reporting. Now, do you like the Daily Wire because you think it's good news, or because I honestly, it makes, I, it makes I, you feel angry? I don't. I really don't consume very much Daily Wire stuff, to be honest. What about the Atlantic? Fake news. <laughs> you know, so, the Atlantic. I think the Atlantic's pretty. There, there's like no journalists. Who's who's a reputable journalist in your eyes? Um. I mean, Tucker, the goat. Tucker As a, Carlson. He said he's not a journalist, though. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't I don't like I, – I, I'll come That's up it. with a list by next – That was a joke, though, right? Talk. Yeah, I was dicking around. Okay, okay. I don't know. I, I, I'm, there are plenty. I don't know that I have a list of, like, my favorite journalists. The New York Post, once you learn how to properly absorb the New York Post for what it is – it can be very interesting because they're basically just a, a headline farm. They just mm -hmm. they they engineer their headlines in a way they're like, oh yeah, this is going to get a million quote tweets because it's such a ridiculous headline. And then you dig, you scratch like one inch into the article itself, and you're like, oh yeah, this is all just kind of made up. Uh huh. Yeah. I thought I lost you. I thought I lost you. Yeah, I didn't know if we if we still had the signal or not. 
No, I mean, <laughs> it, listen, the New York Post is not anywhere that you should get your news, but it is a place that you should get your headlines. You know, I look at I look at the New York Post like, um, uh, what's that? What's that tabloid joint on Men in Black, where he goes to it, and it's like, on the surface level, it seems like bullshit, but they tell a lot of, you know, what I'm saying they crack a lot of cases and shit up there. That's that's the New York Post. The Inquirer. Is that what it, is that what it's called? The one that was all, all on the Bat Boy beat for a while. Oh yeah, no, that that's what the New York. Uh, that's what Men in Black was imitating, but the Inquirer. Sasquatch yeah. Love Child. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were on Sasquatch, Bat Boy. Yellow. Didn't they break the Monica Lewinsky story, though? They That's might what have. I'm saying. Yeah. Well, or that was, was Drudge, that Report. Drudge Report. Oh, yeah. 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 But they've, bro they've broken a few. Like, they've broken a few. Also, it's like, who's like that is, which I have blocked on all social media outlets, is TMZ. Like... For all the bullshit that they that they do every now and then, they crack a story that's really good. They broke but, the Kobe story. Yeah, unfortunately, mm -hmm. Michael um, Jackson. Was it them? Yeah, the goat. Rest in peace. Yeah. Both. Um, did you it. go ahead, Bill? Did you guys see that uh, Elon Musk and uh, Mark Zuckerberg are really going to start? Are really going to fight? Get into the cage. Dana White, like. That's I mean, actually yeah. a better matchup than I than I thought it was going to be because it turns out Elon Musk actually trains in uh kung fu like all sorts of martial arts. Yeah, and he's a big boy too. You can throw that weight around. But I think I think I think Zuck he actually trains in like MMA type shit. Kung fu is not like a real like grappling yeah. MMA type fight. Like no, there's like they you know they don't see kung fu on the background of any MMA fighter because it's not yeah. like a viable MMA. Um, a mixed martial art. Zuck Zuckerberg's been doing a lot of jujitsu tournaments. Know what I'm um, saying? Yeah, like, like functional MMA type stuff. Yeah. But it turns out, like, uh, like it's not like Elon Musk had zero background. Like he's more judo and taekwondo. Where they so it's going to be a better brawl than I think we think. You know, we thought because I thought that it would just be Zuckerberg submitting Elon Musk. They should bet their American. net worth on it. That would be that would make it interesting. Like loser has zero dollars. That would be it's sick. the most American. It's the most American shit in the world, though, bro. Just two billionaires fighting in a cage match. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, there was a really interesting article I read about that the other day. I forget which publication it was from that Big T hates, but it was pretty good. And they were talking about like the the motives behind. Zuckerberg and Elon Musk wanting to do this to each other. And it's interesting because they have both kind of made their living uh, creating things. And I guess they own things right now. Like if you look at Meta, Facebook or whatever, and then Twitter or X, whatever they're calling that, the two products that they're most known for now are just about making people like further apart mentally. And they are kind of pushing all that to the side and saying we just want like the human body craves contact we want to just like embrace our animalistic instincts and reject everything that we've done and our products that we're creating because ultimately they know that their products are not good on a whole for the human brain and they're pursuing these new martial arts is a is a way of like admitting that they just want to like sometimes you just want to be a caveman get away from technology step into a ring and wrestle somebody i thought that was pretty interesting but i do think I actually do think that they should do it for all their money. One person becomes by far the richest person in the world, and the other person is a beggar on the streets. Zero dollars to their name and see how quickly they, they can make it back. That, that would, would take it from, like, no chance in the world I'd watch it to I'd pay pretty good money to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would. That, that's a fight to the death. No, yeah. no one's going to let anybody win that. That's like someone's going to bite each other's jugular out if they really get in bad shape. Good. Yeah. I'd watch that. <laughs> I'm, I'm against gladiator competitions in, in theory, unless it's American Gladiators, which is a great show. But if it meant like the two richest people that control all of social media killing each other, one person dies, yes, I would watch that. Oh, that's tough, though, because then one person is going to control more. Yeah, I mean, who who would you rather win? Would you rather Elon Zuck. owns Facebook or Zuck owns Twitter? 
Zuck on Twitter. As I don't even think that's a close race. Yeah, it's so it, the thing about Zuck though is he was like right place, right time, had a good idea, helped to build it out. Then he's kind of like lost control over everything. Um, Zuck is about to get sunned by Apple and Apple's new like augmented reality, virtual reality thing. Apple's going to just eat Meta's lunch when it comes to that because Apple puts out a, a hardware product. Everybody's going to buy it. It's probably going to be better. It's going to be more expensive, but it's probably going to be way better. I feel like Zuck, Zuck is just trying to tread water. He's he's like happy being where he's at right now. I don't think Zuck is ever going to be included in the same breath as Elon when it comes to like the richest person in the world. Remember, remember during our Facebook episode, we talked about how basically Facebook became so valuable because the government used it to gather everybody's data. Mm -hmm. And basically that was the only reason it became so much more successful than other social media apps at the time. So basically Zuck just was in such the right place at the right time. And uh, Peter Thielen walked up and just made him crowned him the king of social media. Yeah. Peter Thielen, uh, Peter Thiel. Yeah. Great yeah, Peter Thiel for the Vikings. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> wait, did I say now. Peter Thielen? Yeah, Peter Peter Thielen. It's P Peter Thiel, and he's yeah, dude uh, runs like he has everybody's data. The company that he runs is crazy. Palantir. They they are specialists in getting everyone's data from any cell phone technology service and then selling it to the highest bidder. They're very good at that, but they're a company that kind of flies in the radar a little bit. They also yeah. put Deadspin out of business. He's the dude that they leaked. That, no, he's the dude that that funded Hulk Hogan's lawsuit. But that's because they leaked that he was gay. Yeah, which honestly, that's a fair grudge to hold. Yeah, they outed him against his wishes, and so then he was like, "Okay, I'm going to remember that." That's an all-time grudge guy. Oh, there's one other thing I want to get into today, and that is uh, I popped Arian's cherry. Arian had his first Lucy today. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about the way that I phrased it, Arian. That's a wild, yeah, that's a wild uh, <laughs> phrasing. Well, right hey, there. listen, Arian and I had a short conversation earlier today. I borrowed a phrase from Silvio Berlusconi, RIP. Uh, he, I, I told him I had something I wanted to tell him, and he was like, are, are you coming out of the closet? Are you gay? And I said, well, yeah, <laughs> we're all we're all a little bit gay. It's just my gay side is a lesbian. So <laughs> that's... That's the ultimate line, man. Silvio Berlusconi was such a such a horn dog, but I did pop Arian's cherry today, figuratively speaking, with his first Lucy. He had never he had never used nicotine like a nicotine pouch before, so I gave him a Lucy out on the golf course today, and he was he was buzzing, he was swimming. It was great to see. He was just like bouncing around, big smile on his face. Oh, fun, man. It's it's a cool alternative because usually when I when I'm feeling good with drinks, like I'll hit a black and mild, like that would be usually my thing. Um, but I hit a uh, I hit a Lucy. It was what it, what it was, and it just gives you that extra little. You know what I mean? It shit felt good, man. It was, I had to throw that shit out for like twenty minutes though, because it, it was too much. Like with the, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go full scale faded. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I love introducing Aaron to white culture. It's fantastic. That's a white thing. I didn't know that's white. No, it's, no, it's just you know, bros. Like Billy loves the nicotine sauce. Billy can't get enough of it. I do, you know what though? If I'm going to smoke something and it's tobacco, black and milds are pretty fucking good. I used to smoke black and milds like every weekend and you the wood tip, wood tips are great. That's the only uh, way to go. Cherry hold vanilla. On. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just preface this. They're dog shit. They're horrible. And if I die, that'll have probably something to do with it. So don't. I'm don't I'm not advertising to smoke any kind of tobacco. Though. That's just ass. And that's why you should lose use Lucy. Yeah, but it's a it's a, it's a it's a bad it's an old bad habit that I picked up in when I was a kid. But the wine black and mouths are pretty good. No, I like yeah, like I, I enjoy it. Like so, I'm not I don't, I don't I'm not gonna like smoke a pack a day or like I'll smoke like once every three four months. I'll smoke a black just one night. I get out, hit one, whoop. We'll, but I'm not like a, I'm not advocating for that shit. Don't, don't, don't get cancer, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it's not worth. A Arian, Arian having his first Lucy today was a lot like, like Big T smoking his first cigar with a. <laughs> That's still my favorite sound effect. What yeah, a, what a banger I made off of that though. I don't get the credit. I didn't get my flowers, beat. man. That, that was a banger, dog. 
We gotta re-release that. We it's gotta re-release video that. Too. Hey, can we add video? Can we add in the music that that Arian made using Big T cracking the lighter and his cough afterwards? Can we put Can we put that music in right here? Bang. I'll send it to you right now. Fire! Such a banger. <laughs> Such a bag. But yeah, besides that, anything else we want to get into today before Watergate? Big T, you teed off about anything? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. We're not going to each other for a minute. Yeah, we're not. It's gonna be it's gonna be set. What about you, Mad Dog? Are you are you made off about anything? Hmm. Am I made off about anything? Um um, right now I'm remembering how annoying it is to move and find an apartment. I'm trying to find a place right now in Chicago and I'm, it's just a really frustrating process. Um, it is. And I'm really, ma- I'm made off about that cause it's like kind of coming up and I'm, I'm trying not to get stressed about it, but it's like one of those things. I was in Chicago this weekend looking at apartments, didn't really like find the one. So then I feel like I kind of just like wasted two days. Um, so if anybody has just like a beautiful, huge sweeping apartment that they're looking to sublease out to me for about a year for maybe like $300, $400 a month, I'd be like very willing to take over that space for you. I would keep it very nice. But uh, wow. yeah, no. It's much better than it's, New York. Though. It's so much better than New York. Um, it's just a frustrating process like overall. And like moving from here to Chicago, like I'm trying to figure out what to do with all my shit. And... Yeah, but that's like kind of all made, I'm made off. I'm excited. I have another Taylor Swift concert this weekend, so I'm excited about that. You're oh, double wow. dipping. I'm double dipping. You're one of those um, freaks. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yes. I'm a freak about it. Yes, I'm very excited. I'm going to be at Cin- in Cincinnati. And Arian's been muted. He's been saying. Isn't it going to be? Ain't it going to be the same show though? Yeah. Exact same show. No, yes. not exact same show because there's going to be different. Okay, there songs. are two songs that are different. Um, yeah, I'm so that's, excited though. That's an avid fan right there, yo. But, um, yeah, I'm, and I'm going with two different, like, I'm going with different people that I went to the first show with. So it's like a fun experience to go with different people. Uh, I'd go every you know, night if I uh, you, you know how they say, like, they always ask guys, what's your dream foursome for golf? Like, mm-hmm. if you were to go out and play golf with three other people. Mad Dog, what's your dream foursome for going to a Taylor Swift concert? Like, who I'd <laughs> go with? Like, to to sit with yeah anybody anybody it could be anybody in the world oh like famous people Gia. yeah famous people count okay gia mariano who works with us and his friend's little sister uh she, i went to new york with her she's like uh kelly keeks would also be there um okay so those two i'm and... really kind of blowing this assignment no, you because... can go with these people anyway. <laughs> but, you have. It's true. But but like but like those are the people. This is your wildest dreams. Yeah, it is my wildest dreams to go to. <laughs> like I love them, and I would want, like I like we like those are the people that I care about Taylor Swift with. Like those are the people I wouldn't want to go with four strangers. You know what I mean? That wouldn't be as fun. I wouldn't know them. Um, and then my other two people would probably be, <sighs> hmm, um, Octopus Lover Eight from TikTok. <laughs> if you guys know who he is, um, okay. Um, if you guys know who that is, and then do you guys know who that is? Yes. Yeah, you do. It's kind of fallen off. Oh, for though. sure. World of T-shirts? No, not yes. World of T-shirts. Oh, no, I no. am yes. so anti-World of T-shirts. And then, oh, uh, we don't, we don't support that. No, I feel bad for him. I think he's getting taken advantage of. And then my fourth one would probably be, ooh, um, ooh, maybe like her, like maybe like Gigi Hadid, because that's like her best friend. And then I would know like secrets. Like, oh, she'd be like, oh my god, like she like almost like didn't put this in the set list, but like. So and so made her do it, and then I would like get like tea from her, like on that. Um, that and Mad yeah. Dog really fucked that up. That was who bad. would you? Who would yeah. you? I, and you, you guys... picked four, and you're only you only get to pick three. Oh, you're that was the, three. You're the, you're the fourth. Was oh, okay. Well, then yeah. take Gigi Hadid off that list. So it's just your friends that you could go with. <laughs> and then anyway. Octopus Lover Eight, <laughs> and then Pussy yeah, and PSA. then a guy off TikTok. But like, no, like the whole point of a Taylor Swift concert. And again, I'm gonna. I also everyone knows I'm bad at drafts here too, like. I want to go with t- to a Taylor Swift concert with people who also like, like I can be fully myself and like fully excited with. Like if I went with like I don't know Harry Styles to a Taylor Swift concert, like me and him would have a great time. But like him and I, I wouldn't be able to like freak out with him. Or like when I'm with Gia, Gia and I know each other's like number one surprise songs. Like I can freak out with her. 
Like, that's who I want to go with. Who would you pick, PFT? I would go uh, Evgeny Proskin, the head of Wagner. And <laughs> I would I would give him a lot of artillery. <laughs> Stage a coup. Uh, speaking of that, <laughs> Bill, Billy, is there anything that you'd like to clean up from your previous Russia statements about the attempted coup? Uh, so a lot of people are saying that the – the planes definitely got shot down that Wagner definitely shot down a bunch of planes, but like we literally have seen zero, like there's no evidence of that besides them saying, okay, but okay. But Billy, you were also saying that this was a big psyop that, that Putin and Prozgev were, were staging together. And there's been a lot of more information that's come out where it's like, no, Wagner was actually like trying to kidnap some generals and take over the entire military since then. No, no, that, I all mentioned, but they literally was just kidnapping the generals that were that might have been part of the coup. Oh, so he was he was defend he was secretly defending Putin <laughs> the entire time. I mean, it's hey, yo, like fill me in, fill me in. Or, I know what's going a thousand percent over there in Russia. Yeah, but yeah. for those that don't, let them know what's actually going on and the news that came out. Oh well, Billy is a Putin simp. So so He's let's there. so I'm not a fucking Putin simp, dude. Wait. So this is the equivalent. So Papa John Schnatter, uh, John Schnatter, Papa John's, let's say he got in charge of uh, a private military group Mm -hmm. and was best friends with Donald Trump. And and then (laughs) Donald Trump like would send Papa John Schnatter to fight all his wars. And then uh, one day Papa John Schnatter said, hey, Donald Trump, you're not supporting me enough. I'm going to march on Washington, D.C. And that's basically what happened because Putin's favorite chef uh, became the head of a gigantic private army that's just been wreaking havoc all across the globe. Okay. But you, the way that they were phrasing it earlier was that Papa John was secretly in cahoots with Donald Trump the entire time and Hezzy gave a Hezzy Hay invasion to Washington, D.C., Everybody freaked out, and then meanwhile, uh, with Trump, Papa John then went to Arizona and took over the voting machines. Yep. Okay. So, but that—that's what we're sticking with. No, we don't. We don't know the because basically, why is he still alive? Why did they? Let, so they went to Belarus to sort it out. Might have worked out a deal. He, he like left Belarus alive. Like if that actually had happened, if he'd actually caused a coup, that guy would be dead within the week. Uh, unless Putin isn't as powerful as he wants people to think that he is. Like think about it. If you're Putin and you started this war in Ukraine and it's lasted like a year and a half and you haven't done shit and everybody's getting killed and you're going to have to institute a draft to get conscript- conscripted soldiers instead of a volunteer army to fight, you probably – your back's against the wall. Yeah. But the only counter to that is that they did, like uh, Wagner was like, we're not we you know we're not getting enough support that we should have, and then during that exact time they took Bakhmut, and which was a major like reversal. So we we you know it might be like one of those things where in the UFC where a fighter will pretend he's hurt to let another fighter try to come in and finish him and then just catch him on his way in while he thinks that he's going for the kill. Okay. So you think that this is a, a big like psych out and then Ukraine's going to invade Russia and then they're going to knock Ukraine out. Yeah. Just overextend their forces. Okay. And where, where are thing, your sources on this one, Billy? Uh, not great ones. I've been re- just like <laughs> different types of Twitter threads, Reddit threads yeah. pieces. But the thing is, at the same time, if you wanted to get the Russian people to get farther behind the war, you'd ha- you try to create a situation where Ukraine invades, overextends their forces, gets greater, uh, uh, you know, a support from domestic groups and the average guy who doesn't want to go to Ukraine but will fight at home against Ukrainians in Russia. The old rope is what you're saying. Yeah. Now, yeah. Billy, fact or fiction, most of your sources on this come from Twitter threads with blue check marks that are like crypto influencers that have a couple <laughs> million followers in the Bitcoin space 
and they host these spaces on Twitter that people can listen to, but they don't really have any subject matter expertise of their own. No, I mean, I do read articles. You can read stuff in the Atlantic. There's, there's different, like I do actually read articles like foreign affairs. Mm-hmm. Like but, I still have a subscription there, but you also listen to the Bitcoin Twitter spaces. Mm-hmm. Not the Bitcoin Twitter space is more geopolitical tweeters. Well, no, it's it's people that are tweeting about geopolitical uh, events and outcomes that also happen to be Bitcoin peddlers. Oh, so you're saying that they want worst case scenario, so Bitcoin goes up? No, I'm just saying that the people that are generally like Bitcoin influencers are not nearly as smart as they think they are. Right. I mean, this is just one theory. Because the main, like everyone knows about what has happened from what's been put out. Because if you look at a lot of the video and content coming out of it, it's just like very. Donnie and I were talking about this on Monday. It's very like weird how you know there was a coup, but no no fighting actually happened. Hmm. Yeah, they're bloodless coups sometimes. I think Myanmar was an example of that, right? Wait, wasn't that wasn't that the wasn't there a massacre involved? Um, are you talking about, I don't know, maybe I'm getting my countries mixed up. There was a bloodless coup yeah. a couple of years ago where, you remember there was a lady that was like stretching in front of the the parliament or whatever. She was doing like a yoga video. And then there's just tanks in the background rolling into the city. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm no expert, but I'm just like, like saying what I read. And I'm like, Hey, that that's a possibility. Yeah. Bill, Billy's it's, no expert. It, he, but he does read a lot of people who say that they're experts. I actually read from experts too. Okay. So checkmate. Listen. I can't I can't name them, but they're in publications. Okay. Um I I also tend to be a skeptic about a lot of things, including Billy. So I'm not saying that that the general story that you're hearing is hundred percent correct, because chances are it's not. But I'm also saying that what Billy's saying is probably not hundred percent accurate. Well, it's just crazy that the whole thing lasted like a day and a half. They got 200 kilometers from Moscow and they just said, okay, we're not, we're, we're turning, like, we're not going to actually do anything. Yeah. Psych. Not, not. Um, what, do you, what do you think is actually happening? No, no. I, I mean, it's either what they're trying to project because why would the Russian state media push that they are weak right now? Like, that's never occurred on purpose from russia i so i think the most logical explanation is that um and it's not the state media necessarily that's pushing that that's like international experts that study this shit that are talking about how how weak they are but in the event that russian state media does show signs of weakness in terms of like saying everything that putin is doing is going well it's because in russia you have to go along to get along a little bit and if power starts to shift to somebody else you definitely want to be known as being a person that's on the side of the new powerful people that are coming in into the regime. By the way, also, we really shouldn't be rooting like if Putin goes down and this dude becomes the next Putin, this guy is so much worse than Putin. Oh, no, I, I agree. This guy's a piece of shit. This guy is a fucking psycho warlord. Yeah. And there's a bunch of nukes that are out there in Russia just drifting well, around. They had control of them at one point. So we're they told, like could, yeah. right? So we're told. But like, if what if what was true was true, and that the Wagner Group had taken over the southern military state uh, and were marching to Russia and had taken over that whole apparatus, they had control of nukes. So it was for the first time, like I don't think we want to like say this, but like for the first time ever, a non-nuclear power had nuclear powers yeah also it kind of gives credence to to my theory that these countries don't have as many nukes as they say they have true like during the cold war i think that there was a lot of you know puffing your chest out since it was all about like deterrence and mutually assured destruction saying that you had a shitload of nukes was almost better than just building the nukes because you can just say oh yeah we got five thousand new nuclear warheads and then the other country has to be like, oh, fuck, they've got so much more than we do. And then they can just lie and say they have more. I don't, I'm a truther. I'm a, I'm a nuclear weapons truther. How many nukes do you have in your backyard? Three. 
I got three of them back there. My driver, my three wood, my five wood. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, just a, a recap here because I know I addressed this last week. I want to make sure that, that I'm presenting both sides of an argument so that we're not fake news. This hotel room does have body lotion in it. So we're, we're back. We're back. Some hotels still carry it. They keep that thing on them. I don't think they ever left, man. I'm be honest. I think that's like the most essential shit that they have. I used to I think, why do they even have that lotion? That's the whitest shit you could price. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. I'm showing my complexion. <laughs> Your privilege. That's yeah. my privilege. No, no, my, no, my complexion. Yeah, um, Arian, are you eight off about anything? Uh. I'm chilling, man. I'm 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 in a really good place in my life. I, I'm happy, you know. People are good. I'm chilling, bro. Aaron got got autograph hawk today. That's true. Somebody rolled up with like pictures of him, like a stack of pictures of him from the University of Tennessee, and they're yeah. like, "Can you sign all these?" And he was so polite. I thought about fucking him up and just like rolling down the window and saying, "Man, <laughs> man, James, you really." make people think that you're Aaron Foster a lot, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so for people that don't know, like, there'll be people, like, there's a lot of times we have security, like, outside hotels or, like, when you roll with teams. There'll be people who'll be sitting there with pictures of you to sign. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll get you to sign and they'll sell them. And so it happens all the time. I haven't seen it for a while. Um, but a lot of times what they'll do, they'll get their kids to do it. So they make you feel bad about not signing it. But they're the same pictures, same thing. And they're like, come on, man, it's for my son. My son's right here. And he's like, please. And you're like, nah, I'm good. Um, I haven't seen this in a while. This lady rolled up with her daughter, and I'm sure they were just massive University of Tennessee fans. Mm. Uh, I hadn't seen it in a while. And so they showed up, and I just signed it. It's, I was I was chilling. It's all good. Was it one yeah. or like a bunch? It was like four, three or four. It was actually kind of cool because I haven't seen those pictures in a long time. They were really good pictures, so. Interesting. I ask, that's, that's usually what I do. What, what, what they, they usually have a bunch of them. I, should, I just run like, you got an extra one. Yeah, you, they're ready to go. Do you think your Tennessee autograph pictures sell more or your Texans autograph pictures? I don't even know that they would, honestly, bro. I, 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 I don't know anybody that would buy it, but uh, apparently there is. It's yeah. still a market. I, I don't know. I don't know what the market for that shit is. I, don't, I have no idea, man. I'm not like a... A 2014 limited auto gold <laughs> Arian Foster Houston Texans uh, patch autograph card goes for sixty dollars on eBay right now. That feels kind of light, honestly. No, that did. That's kind of disrespectful. How's it disrespectful? My name on a piece of paper is worth money. That's pretty. That's pretty cool, dude. Uh, a 16 by 20 picture you can get for thirty. Wait, but are they actually signed? Yeah. Like, definitely signed? I mean, yeah, it looks like it. Aaron, did, have I ever asked you about your autograph? Like, if you if you practiced your autograph? Oh, I got in trouble for that shit. Absolutely. It was part of, it was part of me willing my success into existence. When I was a kid, there was a, there was a running back by the name of Barry Foster. He, played, he used to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so it was dope seeing somebody with my last name. And so when I was in second grade, I used to sign all my papers, Barry Foster. And my teacher was like, why are you putting this? I was like, I explained to her. And she was like, it's, you know, it's okay to drink. And I was like, I'm going to be in the NFL one day. So I want to, you know, he was like looking up to him. It was really dope. I got a chance to, he was on the sideline one time of one of our games. I don't even remember which one. And uh, he comes up to me. I don't even, I couldn't even tell you what he looks like today. He comes up to me. He's like, what's going on, Barry Foster? I was like, Barry Foster? He's like, yeah, I was like, bro, I used to sign my fucking second grade papers after you, man. You gave me a lot of inspiration. He was like, that's crazy. But so after I got over the Barry Foster thing, um, I would just all day like doodle and sign and practice my signature, doodle and practice my signature. And then when I went to Tennessee, I got in trouble all the time because I would write it on things. I don't know why I did this, but I wrote it on things. Like I wrote it on desks, elevators, whatever. I would just sign anything. You know, I would just write my name everywhere. And so, get it, caught for that pretty easily. huh? You get caught for that pretty easily. Who wrote Aaron yeah, Foster all over this? Literally, wall? my name. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, my signature ain't really like. If I have a pen here. My signature ain't really 
like you can't really tell. It's just like a big A with a squiggly and an F with a squiggly. Yeah, it's pretty savage, but it's nothing like. There's some beautiful signatures. I think we did that before. We went over like really dope signatures. Mm-hmm. Some people have great pen. Like my mom, my mom has the weirdest fucking talent I've ever seen in my life. My mom can forge any signature. If you write your signature down, give her like two, three minutes, she can forge that shit. And it looks just like it. It's fucking weird. On top of that, she can write cursive backwards. That's wild. Whoa. She can write cursive she can write cursive backwards and upside down. So when I was growing up, she used to write my dad letters in the mirror cursive. So he would have to hold it up to a mirror in order to see what it was. Which is a fucking t- it's just you cursive backwards cursive. And I'm she can do, do it, it upside it. down. Your it's- mother's a secret agent. Your mother's I, undercover. Might be part of the CIA. I don't know, but it, it's like the wildest talent I've ever seen. I was, I'm like, mm-hmm. well, how did you learn this? She's like, I, it just makes sense to me. And this is just how her brain is wired. She can, and she has beautiful penmanship. Like she writes beautifully, but it's like backwards, and she can write backwards upside down. It's just, it's wild. The whole shit is wild. Wait, backwards upside down and cursive. Yeah, backwards upside down cursive. Do kids learn cursive anymore? I don't think my kids. I do. think some places have stopped doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Mad Dog, did you learn cursive? Oh yeah, for sure. I learned okay. cursive. We had a yeah. whole. They were like, "This is very important that you learn this." I could only write in cursive. Like I wasn't allowed to write. It in was print. like second or third grade. Third maybe? to like sixth grade, I was only re- allowed to write in cursive. I couldn't use print. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I had a teacher in high school that made us do every assignment in cursive. Which is just insane That's bullshit. for high school. So I, I dropped that class after two, after two days. I was like, Good. fuck that. I'm out. Yeah. That's a, that's the most ridiculous thing ever. Cursive is probably extinct now. I would imagine. That was like the most annoying part on the SAT was like finishing it. And then you had to write like the agreement all in cursive. <gasps> oh my I was God, like, the, right. re- the rest of this was fine. I just don't want to write cursive. I forgot about yeah. that part. It's letters, but fancy. <laughs> Did you guys have to use like we had to do cursive and then we were only allowed to use erasable pens what I oh know. yeah those were sick like could those you, erasable pens yeah like i couldn't use a normal like big like normal pen i had to use an erasable pen up until high school that's mm. just a power trip yeah but the erasable the erasable pens had those like tribal tattoos on them i do remember I what they're what called you're talking about yeah i'm gonna hear some eerie shit yeah so I was going through my, we was at my grandma's house a long, a long time. It was like, probably when I was in college. We was at my grandma's house in uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico. And um, going through like, oh shit. My mother had a brother named Joel who died in a car crash when he was 18 years old. R. Peter Joel, so it would have been my uncle. So I'm going through, we're just going through a whole bunch of that, oh shit. I'm looking through these notebooks. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? It looks just like my handwriting. I'm like, Ma, who did, who's this? She's like, that's Joel. I'm like, dog, this is my, it, it looks exactly like my handwriting. I'm like, she's like, no. And so I write like something just about, like she, was, she was freaked out. It was the craziest shit in the world. Dude wrote just, I wrote just like him since he was first, but it was the wildest shit I've ever seen. That wow. is crazy. Yeah. Gen- Nature yeah. determines a lot. Genetics definitely, it definitely affects handwriting for sure. Does it really? I mean, it's got to. I, I know that my writing and my brother's is very, very similar. My writing and my cousins are very similarly bad. Yeah, oh, my shit. Yeah, my, my, my writing was shit, which is why I noticed it so fast. Big T, did you ever practice your signature? Uh,. I, I think I remember at one point I was like, I want to have a cool signature and like tried some and like not thinking I was going to be a professional athlete or anything. I just wanted to have a cool one. Mm-hmm. And then I eventually settled on one that's pretty shitty. Your signature, it should just be the letter T. So I, a couple people have asked like us to all sign stuff. And so I've tried coming up with a signature for big T and like, at one point, I was like, I'll just do a big T, but that looks yeah. dumb as fuck. 
no so that's then, cool so then at one point i did a like a huge t and i wrote like big and little letters next to it but that doesn't look very good either so i still haven't come up with a good one for big t i got a good one i i've figured out something cool f- because if i sign my real name people are gonna be like who the fuck signed this uh put b next to a big t and g next to the t so then it's just like the i is sort of in the t i see what you did there yeah i i actually yours though what you've come up with is is good yeah just a so i write billy with my y tailing off back to the b and then i put uh i put laces in the curve of the y so it looks like a football that's good Hey, Eric, yeah, I, like that. I, I like that a lot. Uh, did one of the pictures you signed happen to be um, of you jumping over a pile against Louisiana Lafayette? Actually, I I remember him. Actually, might have been. Don't I don't no this, I don't think this so. This picture, can you see that? Oh no no, no it wasn't that one. Okay. It was I, I think it was playing. I can almost remember the games. It was playing. Memphis in one, and I believe Notre Dame in the other. Because that one's on eBay for eighty bucks. So I was I was hoping that that person eighty hadn't, bucks, baby, hadn't already. Mama, uh, we made it. Sold that. Aaron, have you ever thought about just signing a bunch of old pictures of yourself and just making like five hundred dollars in a day for yourself? I wonder if any athlete does that. If they just like sit at home and do it, like cut out the middleman. I'm just gonna I'm gonna sign a bunch of pictures, put them up on eBay, just rake in the funds. What is this dude's name, bro? Where's my phone? Maybe y'all know, or maybe I got trolled. Hold on. Okay. Jose Canseco. Yeah. <laughs> Pete Rose would do that probably. It's a bad day at the track. OJ. <laughs> Dana, Dana, Dana Pump. Who's that? I don't know. Cause I got my number, and he's like, "Hey, do you know who I am? I'm Dana Pump." I'm like, "I, I have no idea who you are." And he's just some rich dude. He's like, "Well, check, check me out on IG," and uh, and then and I'm I'm gonna call you back. I said, "Okay," and he didn't he didn't link his IG. He just texted me. Dana Pump IG, mm-hmm. <laughs> and this was like yes two days ago, randomly. So I look at his IG, and he's just a dude that just take a bunch of pictures with a bunch of celebrities on boats and shit. Still don't know what he does, and then he texts me his number. <laughs> he texts me his number from his number yeah. with his name. It's <laughs> <laughs> like super boomer shit, right? But. He was like, hey, do you have jerseys, game-worn jerseys? And I was like, yeah. Uh, he's like, yeah, but the game-worn, though, you know, I don't want to just have, like, stop. Like, like, bro, I wore swap with the cats that I play with. And so he goes over all these people, and he was like, do you have any uh, quarterbacks, uh, elite quarterbacks from that era? I was like, oh, not really. Uh, they was kind of tight about that. So I got Andrew Luck. He said, I said, elite. I was like, elite. I was like, first of all, who the fuck is you? Second, he was elite. <laughs> Andrew Luck was Lee. He just couldn't stay healthy. But so randomly, he was just like, he's he's interested in buying some of these jerseys. And so he was like, all right. And I was he's like, well, who, how much do you have? I was like, I don't know. So I just sent him the video of that video that went viral. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, all right, I'm up. I'm gonna get back to you with an offer. I said, okay. So we see, we're gonna see what he's talking about. For that was the, random shit in the world. For the whole collection he's or the, for a few of them? I don't know what he's talking about. I'm sure he's not interested in my Shane Leckler jersey, so we'll see. <laughs> Dude, Shane Leckler was, was, you, like Shane Shane Leckler was, was good. Punt. He's the greatest punter of all time, but like, how many people is trying to get punted jerseys? You know? But how much would you sell it all for if you had to? If, oh, if yeah. like, What would make you be like, okay, I'll give them all away for this amount? I'd be over M. But oh! Like, That's a lot. I, a lot of money? Yeah. No, bro, I, I would got, expect him bro, to be got, like, like two. I probably got like 15 to 20 Hall of Fame jerseys that I played against. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. born jerseys. Like, Wait, you have an LT? No, I, I don't know. I lost that. I think I lost that in the flood. I did have LT, but it was a Jets one anyway. But still, I, LT. Um, I have Ray Lewis. 
I got uh shit, I don't have to go back through that video. I got like Champ Bailey, Charles Woodson, uh LaShawn McCoy, Jamal Charles, Ray Rice, Adrian Peterson, um I got uh Dwight Freeney. Uh I got a whole bunch, man. I, I got I gotta double check. I can go through it real quick. I like that. Start at a million dollars. Make them come up to you. Yeah, but if no, you don't, but it's like I'm not, I'm not thirsty for bread. So if you if you're not coming up over there, just know for what. I you bet know, you could sell through. for three. Denarius Thomas. R.I.P. A.J. Green, Cam Newton, Mike Evans, Glover Quinn, Shaw Jones, Steve Smith, Reggie Wayne. Andre Johnson, Tony Gonzalez, Goat, Tony Tony Gonzalez, mm-hmm. Troy Palomalu, uh, Marshawn Lentz, Chris Johnson, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, JJ Watt, Frank Gore, Jamal Charles, Brian Erlacher, Jason Witten, uh, Richard Sherman, Ray Lewis, Dwight Freeney, Charles Woodson. And then a random James Harden, Harden one at there. <laughs> that is I bet you could sell that for three million. Yeah, that's, that's a good collection. Does James Harden one? Is that game worn? Still have glitter on it? <laughs> <laughs> that would go for a pretty penny. You could probably find some DNA on that, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Bro. Uh, actually, like, that, that, you, game, bro, that game worn jersey from James Harden is, um, it was from the Christmas, one of his Christmas games. So he played on Christmas. No. Mm-hmm. So. I bet. I bet you could get a good amount of money for those jerseys, especially if you said, like, not only are they jerseys that are game-worn from a Hall of Fame player, but also it's by way of being given to Arian Foster. That probably adds value to the jersey. Like, Arian Foster once owned this jersey. They're signed. Yeah. That's that's a good deal. Um, Arian, I don't, I don't want to bum you out, but I, I do think that we should we should ask – for just like your reaction to to the news that came out yesterday about uh, Ryan Mallett. Oh yeah. So did you play with him? Yeah, play with him. Um, it was a super cool dude, man. Um, it's sad. I, from what I heard, I think he drowned or something like that. I, I don't like to get into the details, but yeah, it, I I heard it was De- it was in Destin, Florida. Might have been a riptide. I don't know. There's not like. You know, there's nothing that that you can read more into it besides the the bottom line, which is that he did drown, unfortunately. But yeah. I thought I thought about you yesterday. I was like, I bet I bet Arian knew the guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anytime you hear about it, it's never a good day. Like, <clears throat> and as we age, those days come more and more. Um, so you really just learn to like appreciate life. It's crazy to see like somebody that you bumped, you know, spent time with, had some laughs and some jokes with, and everybody has dealt with death in a, in a certain capacity. Um, and it's no longer here. Mm-hmm. It just puts things in perspective to just really. It's why it's, it's why I live carefree, man. Because when you deal with death in any capacity, um, you can take it one or two ways. It can like you could consume you, or you could just really, you know, appreciate the journey of you know everybody's everybody's on, and we're all a part of it. Nobody really knows what we're doing. We just wake up and they say, "Go make money." <laughs> Basically, mm-hmm. life in a nutshell, and so. Um, I'm just really appreciative to, to have known him. You know, he was a cool dude. I, I ain't never had no problems with him. Uh, it was a good dude, funny dude. Um, yeah, it's sad. It's sad. I, you know, condolences to him and his family, man. Um, but it's just always a sad situation. Um, yeah, I, I didn't mean I didn't mean to blindside you with that. I probably should have asked you earlier if you want to talk about it, but I just remembered right no, now. And I was like, okay, let's might might as well check in there and on it. But um, yeah, I mean, and also just a hell of an arm too. Like he that yeah. can throw a fucking football. Yeah. He yeah. gunslinger, gunslinger. All right, well, yeah, R.I.P. Ryan Mallett. Um, not really much else to say about it. Just a sad day. Sad day. Anytime you you read about anybody like that, Arkansas legend. Yep, Arkansas legend. Um, Bill, are you beat off about anything? Yeah, I uh, I got beat off. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of. Uh, what am I beat off about? Six point two billion dollars getting like uh, unassigned in the Pentagon. Okay, so all right, let's let's dive into it because I have not read anything past the headline in that. 
Have you I read think, anything past the headline? Yeah, I was beat off about it until I realized that basically they made a evaluation error. It was more of like uh, they didn't – they underestimated the cost of some of the stuff they sent. And in turn, they had to end up either paying more for it or, or the stuff got appraised for more money. So – it is still wild I'm that not, we can make that we can have some sort of uh, an accounting error that uh, that ends up at six point two billion. Yeah, it's just kind of like what? Yeah, but I'm glad that we dug a little bit past the headline on that one. That's progress. <laughs> Thank you. That's Thank another. You. That's another one that's easy to see like a tweet about and get get furious and then assume something and then you read a little bit into it and you're like, okay, it's not exactly what they say. Still bad, but not exactly what they led me to believe. A lot of great bear videos came out. Hey, hold, on, hold on, bear hold down. On, hold, on. hold on, hold on. For the people that don't know what you're talking about, you know, I feel like we should get some context uh, behind the whole six billion thing. So apparently, the Pentagon made a six point two billion dollar accounting error regarding sending <laughs> uh, funds to Ukraine, but I think it was because they sent a certain amount of military hardware that they. Uh, we're meaning to send, but they realized that that hardware actually cost a different amount than they had put into the bill. Okay. Yeah, the Pentagon found it had overestimated the amount of funding for ammunition, missiles, and other equipment that it sent to Ukraine by $6.2 billion due to an accounting error. The value of the accounting error was revised up from $3 billion that was first reported. The result of assigning a higher than warranted value on U.S. weaponry shipped to the Ukraine. Additional funding was uncovered. The 6.2 was in the fiscal year 2022 budget. So, still, so that's, a, it, that's a tough accounting error. Like, you're not a very good it, accountant if you fuck up $6.2 billion worth of something. And it wasn't used to bribe Wagner to turn against Putin. It was not. It wasn't liquid. It wasn't liquid. Okay. So as a result, the department now has additional money in its coffers to support Ukraine. So it actually was like we got we have more money than we thought. That's 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 what this, that's what you're saying. So that that's saying it frees up funds to give them more. Yeah, so it's an it's a six point <laughs> two billion dollar accounting error. To be clear, it is a six point two billion dollar accounting error, which is egregious, but the net result of it is that we have more money than we thought that we did in our Defense Department. So if you are against the military industrial complex, or at least in favor of keeping a closer eye on it, this definitely is something that should make you mad and be like, oh, shit. Yeah, this might not have been an error. We just want more money being routed to our military. So well, it's not really that. I mean, they sent it to Ukraine. So Ukraine has more money, not us. Uh, my understanding is that the Pentagon has more money. I don't believe that's accurate. Uh, the detailed review of the accounting error found that the military services used replacement costs rather than the book value of equipment that was pulled from Pentagon stocks and sent to Ukraine. She said final calculations show that there was an error of $3.6 billion in the current fiscal year and $2.6 billion in 2022 fiscal year. As a result, the department now has additional money in its coffers to use. To, so basically, we ship them. Yes, and they're giving it new, to Ukraine. So, so we ship them new equipment at the cost of used equipment. It's like if you sold a, um, a 2023 Chevy Silverado for the 2021 price. So you, you sold somebody a car, if you run a car lot and you sell it to them at like, I don't know, let's say $40,000 as opposed to $54,000. So Ukraine got a good deal on brand new weapons, it sounds like, but we've already authorized um, a certain amount of money that our defense department will still have to use in its budget somehow. So it sounds like Ukraine just got a great deal. But my understanding is they're sending Ukraine the extra money also. Oh, I, I don't know if that's true or not, because in this article it says that it was going to remain in the coffers. But what if, what if Ukraine, what if there was no war and Ukraine just got a bunch of this brand new gear and then they turn around, they flip it, make a profit. How about that? That would be money in the money in the bank for them. Quote: It's just. I think going they were doing that back. for years. 
it's going to go back into the pot of money that we have allocated for the future Pentagon stock drawdowns. Okay. So I don't know what that pot of money looks like. But I'm going to be honest. But, but I, the, net, the, net, the net result of it is that we didn't – there's not like $6.2 billion that's floating around somewhere overseas that we don't know about. Which is what the article or the headline looks like. The headline. Like. Yeah, the headline definitely looks like that. Yeah. So this this will be a, a recurring segment on the show. Uh, we dig in just a tiny bit to a headline that makes us mad. Yeah, when I said that, when you asked me if I was beat off about something, I didn't want to say no because that would mean I might have not brought an assignment to uh, come play. So I just pull stuff out of my hat. Yeah, Bill, Billy, I bet in school was really good at that. Oh yeah, like so you, you don't read like, a book, and then they ask you for your thoughts about like the character exposition of the the male character in it, like the protagonist, and you're like, um, he's a very complicated man, <laughs> and through learning about the world, he learns about himself. I know he may seem like very basic at face value, but I think there are much bigger underlying themes to what he actually means to do. Yeah. And when he seems to be complex, I think that's actually where he seems more basic. Yeah. Boom. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that Twitter Boom. thread? Did y'all see that Twitter thread that um they had like dropped the uh the the best battles of all time? And one of them oh, was, yeah. And one of them was LeBron James versus the first page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures of him reading the first page of the book like just read the book, dog. You've seen the you've seen the clip of someone asked him because one of them was Malcolm X's autobiography that he walked into the arena with. That was the only book I've seen in his hand, and, and it was like for months. And someone asked him, you know what? Or it was the Godfather. Uh, the Godfather. Someone asked him what his favorite part of the Godfather was because he was reading it. No, no, no. It may have been it both. Was, I don't know. They I, may have done both. Yeah, but... I definitely saw the answer to Malcolm X because that shit was fucking. Okay, hilarious. so maybe he did, he did he both because I remember I think both. But, but he both times he just says like, "Oh, there's so many." Like with Malcolm X, like he was a a, a brilliant man, a great man. No, 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 no. You no. probably can't say it. But he goes, he goes. Oh, I remember he goes, what he said. Malcolm X, is just you know, is just a, a a great man and just a very, very, very good teacher and just really got us to understand how powerful the Negro is. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> what was you, you, this is not 1960, dog. It's <laughs> not like, listen, I'm a LeBron James fan, but that shit's wild, dog. Like, just read the book. It's a great book. <laughs> I've read the book. It's a great book. Could have brought up Detroit Red, his, his, his rad services story. You could have brought a whole bunch of shit. You landed on, he made the Negro powerful. <laughs> Well, it would have helped if he read it. He didn't read the book. It's obviously of really course. Cool. But just say that though, like, bro, you you one of the richest men in the world, more powerful men in the world. Just be honest, G. We'll be like, you like, you know what? I, I'm only I've only got past the first couple pages. I'm busy. I got a lot of shit going on, but <laughs> yes. I'm interested in reading it. Well, he's like kind of obsessed <laughs> with lying, for no reason. <laughs> Is he bad? Is he bad like that? Oh, have you not seen? You need to look up like LeBron James lying compilation. It's hilarious. He it talks is, it about, is very funny. Like he says, he claims he knew the night that Kobe scored eighty one. He was like, when he got to twenty five, I told my friends like he's gonna score seventy tonight. <laughs> and like he talks about <laughs> one time he said, uh, when uh, forgive me, which member of the Migos died? Take off. Okay. When when take off tragically passed away, LeBron said that he <laughs> was showing his teammates uh like he was like, Oh, I'm telling y'all these guys are next up, like these guys are crazy. And whatever year he said it was, like they hadn't even come out with an album yet. It uh, was twenty sixteen I think he said no, twenty fifteen way, way before bricks. that. But or it was like but the song was bricks. He was like, Yeah, I was showing my, my friends bricks back in like twenty twelve. Yeah, he's just like mm -hmm. he lies about a whole bunch of shit for no reason at all. So I all mm -hmm. right, I'm, I'm, it's giving it's giving like pick me energy, like that kind of yeah. vibe. I I I like LeBron James more than most most people do. I mean, I still think he's hilarious because of some of the stuff that he does. He's very like over dramatic, but he's a drama kid basically. Um, but the the lying stuff, I think he does that because he feels a sense of responsibility to have to comment about so many things because people ask him to comment on, you know, any news, 
pop culture current event because he's such a big name and such a big presence that they want to get his thoughts on things because they know that if you're in the media, you get LeBron James to comment on takeoff or something like that. And boom, you've got an article right there. It's already written for you. He gets <clears> asked <throat> to comment on a lot of stuff and he has a very hard time saying like, I don't know. I feel like he had, he feels a need to like, to, to give his take on things and to be like a, a big spoken force in the media about just about anything that they ask. He needs to learn when to just <clears> say like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm LeBron James. Or uh, like, like Aaron said, like I'm kind of busy. Or if you want to stay involved, because <clears throat> that might be it too. And a lot of these, a lot of these entertainers, like they gotta be in, in the mix, right? It's like it's like a social club. You know what I'm saying? Like they like that shit. I don't I don't know if that's his vibe, but that's I, the feel I get from it. You can hire a research assistant to comment on any social issue. I say, hey, listen, I need you to give me what key points I need to say what this book is about. Yo, so-and-so died. I need you to give me some pointers about this. Hey, there's something going on in China. I need to know what is going on. And he could, you hire a research assistant. Pay him 60 grand a year, 70 grand a year. That's what they do is just give you the shit that you want. Like, just like Tiger. Stop driving cars. Pay somebody to drive your fucking car, bro. They got, <laughs> yeah, they got it. They got the longest bread of any athletes. And I, I don't get it. I don't get it, though. My bread ain't that long. I'm very happy and very comfortable. But if I had their bread, I'm not slipping. I'm looking at I'm looking at some of LeBron's lies. And the thing I was, I was looking at that thread, I don't think I don't think some of them are lies. Like what would you apparently he, them as? He lied to a Liverpool <laughs> player about watching soccer. Like, I don't watch soccer, but if a soccer player said, oh, do you watch soccer? I'll be like, yeah, I watched, you know, America in the World Cup. Uh, you know, sometimes this Irish bar I'm at, there's soccer on. Like, technically, I've watched soccer, but the, us, like, holding him face value to that is pretty, like... Well, as a liar, you feel the need to stand up for your fellow <laughs> liar. That's what I'm getting from this. No, but the thing is, some of these aren't, like, like are just more, like, trying to, like, make other people, like, feel better about themselves. Perhaps Except one. when he brings the books out. Except when he brings the books out. Yeah. Um, like, to Arian's point, though, like get, getting a press secretary. LeBron James needs a press secretary that goes out and answers questions for LeBron James but isn't LeBron James. And then if they fuck up, then LeBron James like, you know, we thank this person for their service. It's time for them to move on, find a different role in life, and then they hire another press secretary. That way it's not LeBron James doing it. You could do the whole, like, ready player one shit. You know, we talking to Percival. I haven't seen it. <clears throat> Asshole. But he's talking to Percival, uh, the, the the owner of the company, talking to Percival in the air, and he has a team full of people telling him what to say. I just want to kick back. You know, o- open the soda, play some guitar, whatever the fuck he said. Same shit. You can mm-hmm. have that shit in your ear, bro. Have a little AirPod or something, whatever, in your ear. Like, yo, when they ask you about this, say this. You can be the most, you can be the most, you can get the most perfect answers of all time, bro. But I know we riding him. He has been wildly clean in his stardom. For the amount of time he's been in the star in 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 in, in the in the limelight, he's done an amazing mm-hmm. job of keeping, you know, that clean slate, cause shit. I, I had trouble with it. It's hard, bro. It's hard living in a fishbowl and trying to do anything perfect. It's just, it's not easy. So that's very commendable. It's just, just read the book if you want. That's just read it. It's not, it's a good book. Actually, you should read. Or great book. Just don't. You could uh, not read it and just not walk out with it in public if you're not going to read it. Like you could. That's also true. You could just not do anything with the book. Yeah, I, I really swear, like, yo, somebody should ask him. Like, did you really read? The, like, did you read, did you read the book? Like, yo, like, I mean, that's what they're asking because they can't ask that. That'd be a great question to ask. Did you read the book? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. The book. needs to read the book. The watching The Godfather the six times and not knowing a single scene is also pretty wild. All of them. That would, that would, uh, that would Trump did when he asked me, what's your favorite part of the Bible? He's like, what's your favorite verse? He's like, all of them. He said, he said, yeah, that's a, that's a personal question. They were like, well, <laughs> he said, there's so many. And they were like, well, just pick one. And he was like, I, I, I couldn't possibly this. And then he was, he was speaking at, it may have been Liberty. It was some Christian college. 
and he said oh, yeah. he said two Corinthians. <laughs> two mm-hmm. Corinthians. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, dude. Oh well, my favorite my favorite Donald Trump Bible moment was like it the Bible. It's one of the best books ever written. I think they say that it's uh, it's the, the Bible deal. and then Art of the Deal as the two most yeah. frequently sold books, <laughs> two great ones. <laughs> like, come on, I just think call, ask somebody. I think, he, I think he called it an all-time great. I think he called the Bible <laughs> like an all-time great. Like, I mean, not wrong. It's a bucket list one. <laughs> but, dude, just ask somebody like, hey, this uh, this two Corinthians, what, what's that about? Two Corinthians. Do, do you all have a favorite Bible verse? I know yours. I, I have one. You know mine? Yeah. What is it? I don't know the exact. I know some of the parts of it. What is it? I, I think I I think I know the one that you think is the funniest. Please. Uh, I think it's. Uh, sorry, it's the one. It's the one about uh, yearning for donkeys after being enlightened. No, it's not. And why would you think that? <laughs> Because you once texted into the group chat. Oh, I mean, I'll be, be texting a lot of shit in the group chat. No, my my favorite Bible verse is John 10, 34. Love that. Love that verse. It was Jesus. I think he was speaking to, who was he speaking to? I forget who he was speaking to. But he was, they were, they were questioning like him because he was uh, claiming to be the son of God and God at the same time. That's, that whole thing is very confusing. But uh, he said, then he says, is it not written in your law that ye are gods? He's telling them you're gods too. Fire. Love that. I like that. Mm-hmm. I don't have a favorite Bible verse because I've, I've never read the Bible. But I, I yeah, like... You've read some of it. I like in the beginning there was light. <laughs> I, fuck, I fuck with light. Wait, How wait, does the Bible wait. end? You just, you, just, you just combined two. Oh, did I? Yeah, in, in the beginning. In, I, like, in, in, I like in the beginning. Well, there's so there's. Well, you're. Are you talking about Genesis one? Like, let there be light, or in the beginning there was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. You combine in the beginning, two, like the, the very the first line of the Bible. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah. Ezekiel twenty three twenty, is a uh, is an amusing verse. Enlighten us. It's it's uh so, sorry to assume that you thought the funny one you sent in was your favorite because you can't have great verses but like like the art of war that we read a lot of the Bible is just like common sense that we assume that everyone knows that but like back then it was sort of revolutionary <laughs> stuff. Hmm. So the the book of Genesis one one in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. What, what like translation that. is that? Uh, that's Google, the first Google That sounds like a, like a new lib translation. <laughs> the the King, King LeBron James version? <laughs> King <Something>. LeBron James. <laughs> like that, yeah. And what's the line? Let's spoil the Bible. How does it end? Big T, how's the Bible end? Uh, it depends. Who did it? it depends. Uh, the devil did it. Which which side you're on in the rapture? <laughs> it ends fairly poorly for some people. The last sentence in the Bible is a beautiful spiritual bre- spiritual blessing, and it says. I don't know that. Let's see. Wait, that's the end of Matthew, Mark. Hang on, I, found, I clicked the wrong link here. Uh, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. That's a good ending. That sums it up pretty well. That's a good ending to the Bible. Yeah. Should we read the Bible, guys? I'm so down for that. There's some outstanding stories like that y'all did, would love. Like how we did Art of War. <laughs> yeah, guys. That, the Bible that was, is that was very cute. entertaining. I agree. From a it's secular wild, perspective. Mm-hmm. I, I'm you're talking to an atheist. I, I it's it's wild. Like so it's the, the first testament, bro. It's fucking yeah. wild. Revelation. It's a wild shit in there, bro. It's wild. A lot of lot of raping, a lot of killing. This is a lot, it's crazy, dog. A, a couple years a ago. Life. A, yeah, a couple of like five, six years ago when I first started here at Barstool, and I had a little bit more free time to write on my hands. I was going to do a translation of the Bible. But that might be a little 
Is that sacrilegious to do a, a new translation? I don't think so. I mean, bro, Bible. It's, if if it's you, been tra- yeah, it is. But not if you don't believe it, like it doesn't matter for you, I guess. It's just it's been translated so many times. Like I feel like we're we're due for a, a new album. <clears throat> it was, it was. <laughs> whatever you read sounds like the newest <laughs> translation. That sounds like some Hillsong Church stuff. Well, I ain't what, dropped a minute. What, what's lib about saying like, okay, in the beginning there was nothing in the guy. No, said, it was just it was just the wording sounded very. What did you Google to find that? Tell me what you Google. Prosaic like. opening opening line of the Bible. Because I want to find out what translation that is. I think it's, that's that's the King James word. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and the earth was out for that. That's that's the King James version. And the earth was out form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Was it really? And God said, "Let there be light," and there was did light. Big T, did Big Big T just call the word of the Lord liberal? I think he well, did. No, oh, I just God didn't bless. expect that. That was the KJV. That sounded very New Age. New Living Translation. Uh, this would always this would always do me off about the Bible, bro. Like some of the, some of the wording and shit. And God saw the light that it was good. What's good light? Like what does that mean? Good light. Well, there is light? like there's bad lighting. No, the like those new those new incandescent not light, light bulbs. Dark, mm-hmm. Darkness wouldn't be light. Like what is what's good about? I God mean, saw the light and that it was good. I believe the next part is that He divided it from the darkness. Which also isn't true. You can't divide light from dark. How do you figure? Is how do you divide dark? light from dark? dark? It's just shit in the way of the light. Right now it's light outside. Later it's going to be dark. They're divided. That's what I'm saying. He didn't. There's no divide. The, okay, you guys, the division of our planets. I think night and day is the implication there. But yeah, I mean, you can say that you you made light and it's good light. Like a, a circle, a circle light, like you know the ones that Instagram influencers use. You can always see it like in their eyes. It's like, oh yeah, this lighting's good. No shadows on my face. The sun is good light. You have it's to not admit, bad light. You have to admit the sun is good light. But I think in order for something to be good, there has to be a contrast, right? Which, what is bad light? Fluorescent. No, darkness. Darkness <laughs> is bad. Why is darkness bad? He never says darkness is bad. Kind of. He just says anything. light is good. He didn't say anything. He didn't say darkness was bad. He said the light was good. God divided the light from the darkness and called the light okay, day and we have the to read darkness the Bible. he called night. We're going to read the Bible. Bible study. <laughs> yeah. Can we... <laughs> can we read like Mesopotamian myths? Yeah, Billy can read Mesopotamian myths. We'll read the Bible. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll read the Bible. See, and, then, and here's the first contradiction of the Bible. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. You know, it would have been impressive if he had said God made one light and one is a reflection. That would have been impressive. So yeah, wait, you know who? Wait, wait, wait he, who was saying, he, light he was saying that there's a, there's a different light for the darkness. No, he didn't say there's a different light. He said God made two different lights. Yeah. Which is not true. It's the same light. It's just a reflected off of the moon. If if they would have said that, that would have been more accurate and lead me to believe that this is true. If Because you, you understand how celestial shit works if you right, say it in right. physics. Right. The, yeah. moon is, the, the moon is not, it, it doesn't produce light. It reflects light from the sun. Yeah. The I, moon, I, the I moon guess, rocks. It honestly does. Like the moon, if you it, look at it. It is a rock. Yeah, it is you, rock. If you look at all the scars on the moon, all the craters, that that dude has thrown himself in front of some bullets for us. That's like our secret service agent. That's our fullback. We got the moon. It's almost like the moon knows when a comet's coming in, and it just intercepts it real quick, takes it out. Yeah. Like, shout out the moon. Where but was where, he? Where was he when the dinosaurs? Was yeah, that's what I was about to say. Billy was about to say that, Aaron. I beat him to it. <laughs> no, no, but I like like the moon wasn't the moon didn't fuck with the dinosaurs. Mrs. Simon, moon, moon was it? Ma, <laughs> Mrs. Simon, yeah, can't what trust, can't trust past protection. Yeah, 
Get in the film room. Back to special <laughs> teams. <laughs> Listen, they remember the ones that you missed. They don't remember all the ones that, that you connect on, right? These are facts, man. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs. We, we had to sign a whole new species. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ended their career. Ended their career. Yeah, all time would have been players, the dinosaurs. Joe Theismann. <laughs> yeah. you, I mean, when you think about it, dinosaurs, they they ran shit for way longer than we've run shit. So I looked it up. Every single molecule of water on the planet has passed through a dinosaur at some point. It's sick. So we're drinking <laughs> dinosaur piss. Yeah, love it. Every single molecule of water. I would like some... Uh, I would yeah. like to see how Look it that's up. Uh, calculated. Look it up. It sounds like a Daily Beast article, Big T. Uh, yes. <laughs> they also say they also say uh, all the air that you you're breathing is the same air that was back then. So you're breathing the same air that they breathed. Whoa. Well, that makes way more sense than every molecule of water going through dinosaurs. I don't. I don't know. I can't. I can't vouch for that one. But I don't. I don't I'm not saying yay. No. Or Can you send me some literature on that, Billy? Google Ooh, it. It's the first thing that pops up. No, but there was a there was a C.S. Lewis book that I read certain parts of that makes pretty convincing art convincing uh, uh, arguments about like the farther you deep into like delve into science, like the more you find uh, evidence of something greater, not necessarily like the Old Testament, New Testament, <clears throat> Quran, or anything else, but that there is something. Mm -hmm. Wait, say that one more time? Uh, C.S. Lewis wrote, so wait, I might need to get, I did not plan on arguing for the... Uh, Evidence of a higher power <laughs> at this point uh, after <laughs> all we've been through. But there's a C.S. Lewis book um, that has some pretty convincing arguments for why they're uh, not just Christianity, but like a, a higher power may exist the more you look into science. But moving on. I, I, would, like to hear, I would like to hear that argument. Let, I'll, I'll find and send you the book. It's interesting stuff. I have I like read it a couple years ago, and I kind of want to do it again. C.S. Lewis <clears throat> sounds familiar. He, he was a big Bible guy. Narnia. He wrote, he wrote Narnia. Chronicles of Narnia. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, okay. brilliant man. Yeah. Um, all right, you guys want to dive into Watergate a little bit? I'm gonna dive into the water closet first, but I'll be right back. That was good. Wait, Billy, you're just gonna take a piss next to me. If you don't mind, Billy's in my hotel room. He's in the the, <laughs> uh, the other room right now, and the toilet is about six feet from where I'm sitting right now. Like no joke, <laughs> I'm looking at Billy's about to be in there peeing. Let's get into Watergate, guys. Watergate, the the original gate. Every other gate has been based off of Watergate. What are your favorite gates? Deflate gate. Uh, like gate. Def deflate gate. I think they've all been all mid since, you know what I'm saying? Since Watergate. They, they've been like parodies of, of of actual like conspiracies. Yeah. Yeah. Like they haven't been like serious. I mean, or has there been like a serious like gate? Or they're all just like everything's called a gate. There was Russia Gate. Um I'm looking it up right now. The 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 gates. There was um <laughs> Bill Gates. There was Cunt Gate. Cunt was, was a good one. Uh, the outrage on social media that followed when Samantha B called Ivanka Trump a feckless cunt on her comedy news show. I remember that. Real <laughs> so, shame that got canceled. <laughs> cunt gate. Cunt gate is, uh, is fantastic. What about Donut Gate? Do you guys know Donut Gate? I'm not familiar. Mm -mm. Uh, Donut Gate was when Ariana Grande was caught on video licking unpurchased donuts and stating... I hate Americans. I hate America. That's disgusting. What? And then, uh, yeah. This this is, hold on. That was that was Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande, 2015. Uh, video surfaced of her doing that, and then 
she kicked that off because I know that like, that was like a little challenge that was going on. Like yeah, ice cream. Yeah, and then and then she police and and health department investigated, and Grande canceled her headline performance at the 2015 All Star Game concert, citing recent oral surgery. Which that's that's a great spin zone, but yeah, that was because of Donut Donut Gate. <laughs> I've That's never heard of this. I, I, so where was I've she licking donuts? Like donut shops? It, unpurchased donuts. I don't know. But you know what? I'm going to click on the Donut Gate link and we're going to find out about... Please do. Donut Gate. Uh, let's see I here. I think it was just like one time accidentally caught on camera. Ariana I mean, Grande I, licks a donut in viral security camera video. What's about what, con- what, what constitutes a gate? Like what makes it a gate? Do you know what I mean? Just any sort of scandal. So, was this was this submarine thing? Was that an Ocean Gate submarine gate? That was well, actually the name called of that Ocean company Gate. Company was called Ocean Gate, but <laughs> was it really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't a scandal. That was just a tragedy. Macro I mean, kind of gate. Like I think when your incident with Rico happened, I think people called it like High Noon Gate. Yeah, I don't recall There's... that terminology, but it could have been like. But that there would be was... something. There was Nipplegate. Nipplegate was when uh, Janet Jackson had Janet a boob show. Yep, yep. There was Gamergate. You guys know about Gamergate, right? Gamergate. Um, I remember Gamergate. That was when all like the gamers were upset that the the women, the depiction of women in video games were getting like less sexy. I guess. Well, it was. It stemmed from like there was this one video game reviewer that. Uh, was in a relationship with a game developer and she was giving like positive reviews on some of their games. And then gamers were like, this is fucked up. Like this is about ethics and video game journalism. We're not getting it. Women should be questioned more when they're the ones that are doing reviews of these games and we can't trust them because they're all in bed together. And then it just became like a, it became a massive, massive thing where there were like brand boycotts, all sorts of stuff. But that was like the start of it. And then it got into like, then it get, uh, or am I, am I remembering it wrong? Like it got into like women, women's depiction of video games, and it was mad because like I think Laura Croft Tomb Raider, they redid her character to have like less, less boobs. Yeah, and they were like, this is ridiculous. Basically, <laughs> so the, the green M and M her. Yeah, <laughs> they Lola bunnied her. They nerfed her. <clears throat> yeah, people forget that that Laura Croft used to be way way hotter back in the day. The graphics were shittier, so they were everything was square. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was. Let's see, there was Billy Gate. Do you guys remember Billy Gate? Which one? I don't remember Billy Gate. So this is uh, Billy Carter. People don't talk enough about Billy Carter, by the way. Jimmy Carter, his brother Billy Carter, was oh, known. Billy Beer. Yeah, he was known for being just like a, a drunk kind of fuck up guy, good time having guy. And so he's the brother of the president, but he was just like kind of, I don't like the John, if John Daly, if his brother was president, then it's like, oh, that's, that's the equivalent here. Uh, They made beer for him called Billy Beer because he was just known as being a drunk. Um, He represented the Libyan government as a foreign agent in the United States. And so they called that Billy Gate. That might have been the first post Watergate gate. Because that was 1980, so that was pretty close close afterwards. Well, it's a good thing um, we put a stop to immediate family members of presidents having dealings with foreign governments. That, that, that would be is, bad to have that still going on. It is good. We learned and we moved on. All right. There was uh, Colgate, which is C-O-A-L gate, which is uh, the Indian government fucked up a bunch of coal field auctions. There was Elbow Gate. Do you guys remember Elbow Gate? Justin Trudeau, he accidentally elbowed a, fe- a female member of parliament in the boobs. And then the opposition was like, he he sexually assaulted this woman. That sounds like <laughs> a Canadian. Email gate. That was Hillary. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There's, I mean, there's just so many Pizza gates gate. to go through. Pizza gate. Yeah. yeah the yeah, Pizza gate Pizza scandal. Gate. Where do we settle on that, Billy? What's what's new with Pizzagate? I feel like that's kind of gone radio silent on us recently. Well, because basically they figured out that the real scandal was that they were just paying these catering companies insane amount, insane amount of monies to give uh, kickbacks to like family and friends. Yeah, 
that's that's probably what actually happened. There was Monica Gate. I remember that people always they called it Monica Gate, and it was like, come on, come on, like come up with a better name for this because it's about Bill Clinton jacking off onto Monica Lewinsky. It should have been called Mastergate. That would have been that would have been a much more appropriate name for it. Monica- I thought it was oral sex. Well, yeah, she blew him too, but then he also jacked off. I didn't. I never. I never heard that one. I, I thought she just. I thought she just went down on him in the Oval Office. I thought he was jacking. There was off a cigar was, involved. Yeah, when he was using the cigar. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I mean, you could be right. But I, I don't remember. Well, the that. dress is how they found out about it. So it seems to me that at some point he would have had to. Yeah. Did now it was that from spillage or was that like I he pulled out a direct emission? I was not there. I, I can't attest. What would you imagine, Big T, when you close your eyes and you think about Bill Clinton getting getting head? Um, I I'll leave that up to anyone else that wants to. Wants we should have Bill Clinton on the show. Run wild! Sign me up. Yeah. Yes. No, no way. No way that guy knows how to work a computer. Uh, there was Sharpie Gate. That was a shithole one. Oh, also Shithole Gate was on there. Um. There's too many gates. There's too many gates. Everything is a gate nowadays. And it it's it doesn't make much sense that we just decided to use gate as the suffix because there were different scandals before Watergate happened. There was like the Teapot Dome scandal, which would have been another good name for what Bill Clinton did. Um, there's been just a bunch of other scandals that happened before Watergate. But ever since Watergate occurred, it's like, oh, everything's got to be a gate now. Uh, but we can talk. We can talk Watergate. 1972 gate, gatekeeping yeah. there is there's definitely gatekeeping gatekeeping scandals yeah am i gatekeeping gates right now I, I, you might be you're the only one who's spoken about gates gate gate uh you guys want you want, want to talk about watergate itself mm-hmm. i thought that was the goal yeah let's do it 1972 <clears throat> june 1972 there was a break-in going on at the Democratic National Committee headquarters. That was at the Watergate Hotel in, in Washington, D.C. There's a bunch of embassies around there, too. It's just like uh, federal buildings, embassies, Watergate Hotel. And um, there were a bunch of flashlights that they could see across the way. And it's like, oh, somebody's – there's somebody – it looks like a, a burglary or something like that. So Forrest Gump called it in. Yeah. If you remember, if you remember the movie. <laughs> but but what what happened was uh, there was a security guard that was walking through the building making his night rounds. I, I saw a clip. Sorry, man. I saw a clip the other day of another funny ass Forrest Gump line. Yeah. That we forgot to mention. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan come to their wedding. Yeah. And he walks up and he said, "Lieutenant Dan, you got new legs." And then he goes, "Titanium alloy." NASA use it on spaceships. <laughs> he looks down. And he looks up. He goes. Magic legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, so I rewound it back like six times. It's hilarious. Okay, so right. so through the, through the through the eyes of Forrest Gump, this is how Watergate happened. Yeah, right. sir, sir, you might you might want to send a maintenance man over to that office because <laughs> you might want to send a maintenance man over that office across the way. The lights are off, and they must be looking for the fuse box or something. Because them flashlights, they're, they're keeping me away. Okay, sir, I'll check it out. Thank you. So that's how Watergate happened. And uh, the rest is history. But, no, there's a security guard that was that was making the rounds. And he saw that there was a, uh, there was a door that had been taped. So they taped it along the, like, lock and the doorknob of the door so that when you close the door – the doorknob wouldn't close all the way. So that room was being like kept open because there was a piece of tape that somebody had obviously put in front of it to make sure that the door wouldn't lock them out or lock them in. And so he saw that he's like, somebody's breaking into here and uh, they called the police and there was a vice squad of police officers that was nearby. And my, I, I don't want to say uncle cause he's not my uncle, but my aunt's boyfriend that she had for like 25 years, a really long time. I knew him very well growing up. He was one of those guys. If you look up on the Wikipedia article, his name's John Barrett. John Barrett is the guy's name. 
and he was the first one through the door at the Watergate hotel break. And he told me some very funny stories, by the way, about working on uh, on the Vice Squad during during like the seventies and the sixties. So his job, him and his buddies, they were like in charge of trying to find, you know, if it was drugs, if it was hookers or whatever, um, they would try to arrest them. And so sometimes they would pose as hookers and try to like catch people that were trying to pick them up. And then some nights they they were like, I guess there's no crime type, but it was just like these two cops that were very clearly male cops dressed up, trying to look like hookers, not getting hit on by anybody and not getting picked up <laughs> by cars. So I guess there, I guess no horny guys out here tonight. What are we going to do about that? Because I'm looking good. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking real good tonight, and nobody's trying to get in these thighs. So it must be it must be them. I guess we've done our job. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, they um, – there were some people that were breaking in there, including people that had ties to Richard Nixon, had ties to the CIA, had ties to the FBI. But they're breaking into um, the Democratic National Committee trying to get intel on the elections that were going on. So back then it wasn't as easy as just hacking into somebody else's computer to find out what they were up to or paying some other group to hack into their computer and give you the information. To do something like that, you had to actually go like boots on the ground break in someplace and see what they're working with. So Nixon was, he was afraid and paranoid about not getting reelected president. And he had this, he had this committee called uh, creep, the committee to reelect the president, which is just a terrible, terrible acronym to have like creep, especially for Nixon, who's like kind of a creepy dude. I think we can all agree to that. He pretty much lost the election because he had to go on television and debate against John F. Kennedy and he looked like way, way creepier than John F. Kennedy. So John F. Kennedy won. And then so Nixon gets elected president later. Very creepy guy names his committee to reelect the president, the creep. So um, he was he was trying to get intel on the opposition to figure out where they were going to be campaigning, what they're spending their money on, donors, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, so that so they got caught that <laughs> night trying to break in. Um, Big T, do you want do you want to take over for anything here? Am I missing anything so far? No, I don't think so. Okay, so at, at into the show. Um, at first, <laughs> at first, it was basically a break in. It was like, okay, well, there's some people that are breaking in. Not really a news story that much, and it was covered just like a normal a normal thing. They were. Uh, they were also trying to like not only steal stuff, but they were trying to drop like microphones so that people could listen in from across the way as to what the Democrats were saying to try to beat Richard Nixon. And then uh, Woodward and Bernstein from the Washington Post started looking into it a little bit. And the identities of some of the burglars made people suspicious. It was people that had done business with the White House before. G. Gordon Liddy, who was like a, a massively influential um like news radio guy for a long time he was like the tucker carlson of his day you could say it was like him and rush limbaugh um he was one of the guys because he was working with nixon and uh, there were a couple other guys that were involved in the break-in that were tied to the nixon administration and so people were like okay well what's what's going on here and then um woodward and bernstein decided to look into it and they started following the money a little bit well, so uh yeah and you should mention uh, Bob Woodward was like very young, like maybe my age or so when he, and they sent him to that first hearing of the guys getting, uh, I guess it was their arraignment after they were arrested because it was just covered like a, oh, Hey, these guys were arrested, like breaking into this hotel. It was a very local, like not big story at all. So they sent a pretty junior reporter to go be there. And I forget, mm -hmm. um, I wish I had it written down. He wrote something down on his notebook when he was in the courtroom that was said, um, and I forget the exact terminology of what it was, uh, but he was like, when I heard that said in the courtroom, I knew that this was more than like a, you know, breaking into a hotel for whatever reason. Um, and yeah. so that's the only reason he ended up being on it was because they didn't think it was a big story at all. Yeah, so when... When they started covering it, they they wrote it up kind of as a, a basic news story. But the the five people that they got were for for Helio Gonzalez, Bernard Baker, James McCord, 
Eugenio Martinez and Frank Sturgis. And uh, they said that police found lock picks and door jimmies, nearly 2300 in cash, most of it in $100 bills with serial numbers and sequence. That's suspicious right there. I don't even know where you get like sequence, sequential $100 bills. You're, you're definitely going to commit a crime or you've just gotten done committing a crime if you have sequential $100 bills. It's like fresh off the presses, ain't it? Yeah, you're basically saying like I work at the United States Men. Where where would you get sequenced hundred dollar bills? Oh, and in a uh, uh, hostage situations when they're trying to pay off the hostage and then know where the money is going to go. Yeah, yeah, it's touched. It's touched like federal hands at some point if you're getting if you're looking at sequential. So one of the funniest things uh, when reading about this case was it turns out the informant. That sort of ratted on the whole group was called Deep Throat. Yeah. Now, looking at my notes on this, uh, the secret informant who provided information in 1972 to Bob Woodward, who shared it with Carl Bernstein and then shared it with the Washington Post, uh, provide key details about the involvement of uh, Richard Nixon administration, what became known as the Watergate scandal. So the guy who tattled on Nixon, his nickname was Deep Throat. I had a feeling yeah. Billy would be attracted to that part of the story. <laughs> it's a pretty cool part of the story. Do you know who he was, it's, it's Billy? funny part. Yeah, uh, Bob Woodward. Oh, wait, yeah. No. Nope. No, no, no. Who was it? Uh, his name was Mark Felt. He was the associate director of the FBI. Yeah. And Bob Woodward promised that he would never reveal that as long as he was alive. But then the guy's daughter, like, got him to admit that it was him when he was in his, like, 90s. Huh. When he had uh, dementia. Nice. I don't know if that's true or not. Now, when did the movie come out? All the President's right Men? before that. Like, in still, like, two or three years after this happened, like, in the 70s. So, was Deep Throat named after who came first? Mark Felt or the, the the first like porno? It was the porn. Porn, the porn came first. For sure. Oh, okay. So he was named after him. That's hilarious. Yeah, I actually don't know why he was referred to that way. He no, he called himself Deep Throat because it was like a popular movie and he was like, Yeah, that's this is kind of funny. And so he so, called himself Deep Deep Throat, probably not knowing that for years and years, actually, it's probably a great reason why he never said that he was Deep Throat, because then he'd have to be like, yeah, I gave myself the nickname Deep Throat. Imagine that, like, if you guys were ever, like, a source somewhere, and then you, you were like, uh, call me, like, giant gaping asshole. <laughs> You're never going to admit that that was you. Right? I, I mean, kind of like maybe the most important source in, like, journalism history. Yeah. And his name was Deep Throat. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's uh it's wild. So um one there was also a GOP security aide that was one of the Watergate burglars. Um and that's that might be what Woodward saw and he was like, Well, this is going this is going deep because this guy is connected to the White House. Also and they also they had a twenty five thousand dollar cashier's check. Um, that was that was earmarked for the Nixon campaign, and it was in the bank account of one of the Watergate burglars. And that's what they found on August first, nineteen seventy-two. So it's about following the money. Where um, Deep Throat couldn't tell Woodward and Bernstein everything, but he could confirm things for them and say, "Yeah, you're on the right track. Keep looking down this path." So the cashier's check was one of those things where they're like, "Hey, this came from." a Nixon source and why is it in the bank account of one of these guys? And so then they started digging and digging and digging a little bit more. You know, what's also pretty crazy. Like this whole shady shit occurring and like guys getting paid on the side, like various, you know, guys working a day job, but making extra money, like working for the campaign type thing is like, just totally makes me think that, these were the same types of uh, dealings that killed Kennedy. You know what I'm saying? Well, these guys, so I don't, yeah, they, they probably shouldn't have been breaking into 
place and trying to plant like bugs and wires and shit. But they were also more of like a bunch of pranksters before this happened. So they were kind of just designed to fuck with the Democrats and the, the Democratic campaigns. So they would go into like DC hotels when they knew that the Democratic operatives would be staying there. And you know how, like, I don't think I've necessarily seen this, except maybe in movies, but people would leave their shoes outside their hotel door to be clean so that the next morning they would have clean shoes on when they got up and they left their room. They used to send the uh, the creep guys, the committee to reelect the president, into hotels and just steal people's shoes in the middle of the night, just fuck with them. They also wrote, like, fake letters, which, like, that – that's something that could happen today is somebody could write a fake letter and do like a fake signature and then tweet out a picture and be like, yo, look what, look what big T uh, sent to us last week. Isn't this wildly inappropriate? And then people would believe that it's true before big T had a chance to be like, whoa, 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 that's not my handwriting. So they used to write fake letters and try to get people hemmed up on that. They were just like agents of chaos. Like the meme warriors. Yeah. Yeah. They were the original meme warriors for sure. That's what I mean. FBI, CIA, they was like known for that earlier, especially in, you know, black communities to cause mischief between, you know, Black Panthers and other organizations and this dissension within the ranks. Divide and conquer has been their game from day one. CIA is known for doing that. Um, and they, this wasn't like new, like Watergate was just when they got caught. They had done so mm-hmm. much shit they have, they, that they uncovered and shit that they didn't uncover, that they was just doing dirty shit. Like this is just part and parcel for like american governmental politics yeah they don't they don't have to be true but there's there will be like 25 percent of people that think that it might be true maybe 30 percent of people that think that it might be true and if you just get that like tiny seed of doubt then that's enough to affect your loyalty and and your entire like operation Mm -hmm. um i want to clean something up so it, it the the special counsel to the creep was g gordon liddy that's the dude. So um, G. Gordon Liddy was going to get paid uh, $250,000 from the creep. And then Liddy, with his partner Howard Hunt, planned the burglary. So they planned it. And then um, after they got caught and arrested and enough questions started to circulate about, wait, one of these guys is uh, a security assistant at the White House – and there's money floating around what's going on nixon finally had to comment about it and said that we don't have any involvement at all in the break-in and um once they started tracing more and more of the cash they indicted the burglars along with liddy and hunt charged them with conspiracy burglary and violation of federal wire wiretapping laws and then all the men except for liddy and mccord they pleaded guilty so the morning after these guys got caught Liddy had to let people know, like, hey, some shit went down last night. My bad. Didn't go as planned. So he had to tell his bosses that everybody got arrested and the bosses freaked out. And uh, Mitchell, who is the head of the creep, issued a statement to the press saying we didn't have anything to do with it. He said that uh, the men involved were not operating on either our behalf or with our consent. There is no place in our campaign for this type of activity, and we will not permit or condone it. So there's a bunch of bunch of denials, and what do you expect them to do at that point? Yeah, they're going to deny. They're going to deny everything, but this is where like the cover up is is worse than the crime. I don't know. I I just have to assume that this type of like spying and shit has been going on for like as long as politics have existed, right? Yeah, as long as they've had the capabilities. Yeah, absolutely. They've always had shit, even in folklore, the like Game of Thrones type shit. People have always had little spies running around, gathering information for them, snitching, mm-hmm. all that shit. <clears throat> and this is where even Nixon was trying to get the CIA to um, uh, dabble into the FBI's investigation. And the CIA declined. Mm-hmm. Yep. There was a, a big cover-up after the fact, so the... Um... Most people pleaded guilty, but Liddy McCord didn't. And when they went on trial, they were found guilty. And then uh, the FBI director, Gray, he testified that um, there were people from the Nixon campaign that had sat in 
when Watergate witnesses were being interviewed and that he turned over the FBI's Watergate files to uh, to the Nixon campaign. And then Nixon pretty much said there was a meeting on March 22nd, 1973, which is about a year after the break in. And that was in the Oval Office. And um, Ehrlichman, he's one of Nixon's guys, was like, we're going to say that nobody in the White House was involved. And Nixon chimed in, that's right, not for it. And then they discussed using executive privilege to limit questioning. Nixon made it clear that he wanted the cover-up to continue. Here's the quote from Nixon. I don't give a fuck what happens. I want you to all stonewall it. Let them plead the Fifth Amendment cover-up or anything else. If it'll save it, if it'll save the planet. You guys like my Nixon impression? I've never, ever done one before, but I think that's not bad. I actually, I actually really liked it. I don't give a fuck bad. what happens. I want you to stonewall it. Stonewall it. Just let them plead the Fifth Amendment. I kind of miss Nixon. Man. I, would, I wish Nixon had had lived a little bit longer because he was such a character that I would. The Nixon impressions are always so fun to watch. Dude, this guy used to get hammered and try to bomb China. Yeah, like, yeah. People don't talk about that. Speak on it. Bill. Yeah, yeah. Let me let, like this dude used to get hammered to be like, let's bomb China, and his age would be like, don't give him the nuclear football. He's hammered, and yeah. uh, it raises an interesting constitutional question. Like, if you know that the president just fucking shit housed. And this is what he likes to do, and he won't remember it the next morning. If he gives a lawful order, and he's like, "Bomb those sons of bitches!" Like, <laughs> should you actually like by the letter of the law in the Constitution, you have to bomb him, right, Big T? Uh, I don't think that would be the case. No. Well, well, who gets well, to decide? Somebody gets to just usurp the presidency of the United States and be like, uh, he, "He's had six scotches tonight." I, I think a court would determine that a person of reasonable and sound mind uh, has the authority to make a decision in that instance. Have a safe room. Have a safe room for the president when he gets drunk to where everything he thinks is going to happen is happening. You know, like have a little, have a nuclear desk, give have him a nuclear a, station. Give him a creed thoughts. Yeah. First must, millennial president. That must be such a rush, though, to like, Order nuclear bombing. Yo. Wow. Only one like, guy's gotten to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Has gotten to do I it. I mean, hey, listen, really listen, well, a lot of people a lot of people yeah, spend bro. a lot of money to do like once in a lifetime experiences and stuff. There is one person on earth who has done that ever. Yeah. You what you what you want to take out? No, no. Well, what are you talking about? I'm just saying. You're saying got he got to do it I, twice. I, I'm saying hey. there's only one person out of everyone who's ever lived. Only one person has the done thing, that. That's pretty crazy. Has done that is fine. Has gotten to. <laughs> it means like there's a okay desire sure. for other people to want to participate. Sure, no, action. but it is. I'm just saying that's okay. like you know, there aren't many things that only one person has done. It sounds like I'm Big okay T is, is saying that there's a there's a market for like a uh, fantasy camp for war crimes. <laughs> like you, you pay five thousand cool. five thousand dollars, get to go pretend to be president for a week and deal with like a, a China invasion of Taiwan. And it's like, well, they they took out two carrier groups in the South Pacific. What are we going to do, uh, uh, sir? Simulation. Sir, Big T, sir, Big T. We only have one option. Be, be honest, Big T. If if it was like a Saturday in the fall, Tennessee was about to kick off against Alabama in like an hour and a half, and somebody came into your Oval Office and was like, sir, we have to nuke China. This is probably going to take up the rest of your day. Do you wait a couple hours? Am I Wait, in this scenario, I'm the real president. Yeah, it's the real president. Um, what have they done to warrant this? Uh, they let's say tariffs. they took a, pay pay <laughs> NIL tariffs. deals to Alabama. Yeah, pay NIL. I mean, if if this is Alabama. a real deal, like we gotta we gotta deal with this. Listen, I'm sure. Like the, what? I hit the button, and then what? Okay, now we're gonna monitor the situation. Put the game on in the corner. <laughs> this is you're telling me the the White House doesn't have a couple TVs. <laughs> That's great, though. It's just you, like you wildly just like hit the button for the nuke, and then like as you gather the casualty numbers in, 
there is Let's go balls. there's no excuse in 2023. <laughs> yeah, you can you can multitask if you're not capable. Of, crazy, if you're not capable of doing that, you shouldn't be president. <laughs> That's wild. He, Big T's got his got his iPhone out like as as he's got a video feed of like a B two bomber coming overseas, <laughs> but he's also got in the corner like ESPN Plus pulled up. Obama <laughs> was definitely watching Bulls games when he was doing shit. Yeah. yeah. The night Osama bin um, Laden was killed, he also had I gar- the I, Eastern, I guarantee Eastern you Conference they were watching. Finals. They were wait, wait. Watching. When was that? May? May 2nd. It was on my birthday. Yeah. Okay. He was, was probably that, watching wait, WrestleMania or whatever. What year was that? Who was playing? 2010 or 11? Because it was my 12th What games game. were on that night? Yeah, see, see what games were on what, that day. Yeah, it was May 2nd. I do remember it was about my birthday. So yeah, it was, it was your birthday. It was my birthday. Um, now that's it been was all like said May first to May second. It was in between. It was like that what, night. So could, the playoffs would have been. A, oh, yeah, Bulls, like, ha, Bulls had a playoff game against the Hawks that night. I guarantee. Oh my god! I, I guarantee you it was on. I guarantee it. Yeah, that's so wild to think about though, dog. Like you're just randomly murdering people and then just on the side watching the game, catching catching the game. I don't catching the game. I don't remember that series. <laughs> Hawks won game one, by the way, 103.95 that night. <laughs> Joe it Johnson, D-Rose? 34. Wasn't that Derrick Rose's only like playoff appearance? No. If you, With Joachim? No, they went to the Eastern Conference Finals against LeBron in 2014, I think. But that was – was that one of his first runs? That's how you know you're great, though. It, it went to the finals against LeBron, not, like not the Cavs or – where the fuck is it? Miami? Well, it was in, mostly LeBron. That was it. That's just, he's great. He's great. I'm trying to look up on on the sports encyclopedia what Frank the Tank has said happened this day in sports May second, two thousand eleven. <laughs> uh, I'm not finding I'm not finding much. But if it was a Hawks Bulls playoff game, yeah, I, I can say that Obama definitely was at least checking the scores. He was like pulling down on the refresh for sure. I mean. I think like once he found out Osama was dead and the extraction of the seals was went well, that he may have been like, uh, "Hey, what what happened?" <laughs> at least, at yeah, least. I mean, I mean, I mean, honestly, how, how much how much more involved are you other than, yeah, go do it. You know well, they I mean? were like, watching a live. I was gonna say, feed. there's that picture of them, all, like everyone watching, like Hillary Clinton and him and Joe Biden. And oh, all them so they act, there's a live feed going. Yeah, on. they okay. were watching. Well, then, it. I think they had on like. Yeah, I don't know if he had it on. Yeah, I don't know. He was looking. He was checking. Yeah. I don't know if he had it on, especially if they had a live. Like, there's a cameras. There's cameras in the room while it's going on. Yeah. It's not a good look to have a Bulls game on in the background while you somebody came out of a very somebody, at a bare picture. minimum, somebody came in at some point and was like, Hey, it's ninety two eighty seven. I knock on the door. Yeah. Is the president the president's it's ninety two to ninety five is the fourth quarter. Is the president allowed to gamble? Is there any laws against For sure that? not. I don't know if there's expressly a law against it, but you definitely like he can't sign up for the Barstool sports book with Barack Obama. Uh, I don't know. I th- I think I think Biden could. I think DC you're allowed to gamble, right? In the city? No, DC's really weird actually. Um it's illegal except for within something like a thousand feet of Nationals Park. So that's the only place you can do it. It's something about you have to be within a certain amount of feet of a physical sports book. And the only one is at Nats Park. Yeah, we could go with the bridge real quick. Go up to Andrews Air Force Base. But also, like, he does a lot Put of... Put your bets in. Come back. Yeah, President does a lot of public appearances in a lot of different states. Like, what if he came to yeah. Ohio and went to the Roxino and, and wanted to... I just well, can't imagine is the he allowed to invest is allowed in... to do that. Is he allowed to invest in companies? No. No, no. the Muleman Clause, yeah. So... Hey, yo. So I couldn't find anything... That says presidents can or can't gamble, but it's just like article talking about people. The night in the 2016 election, they uh, estimated there was over a billion that was wagered on the election. Was <laughs> so people betting on the elections? Oh yeah, but Biden definitely just uses Hunter for that. Like that is, Hunter, you oh, in, shit. you in Delaware? Log in a couple bets for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, Big T, you'll find this to be interesting though. So uh, there is, in fact, a link between the University of Alabama and the Communist Party of China. I believe it. CCP. Oh. So the U.S. Department of Education investigated a link between Alabama 
and the lab that the U.S. government says is closely linked to the origins and spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. How about Lay that? Lay it on me. How about that? Nick Saban caused COVID? Nick Saban <laughs> might have caused COVID. He, did he get a good recruiting class after that? <laughs> I mean, they're they're in the top three every year. He probably found out that Kirby was like going after one of his quarterbacks and was like, I got, we got to, we got to stop international travel. We got, we, we got to stop airplanes in the United States. Just think about it. Something to consider. Um, so Watergate. Back to Watergate. Water watered down. Back to Watergate. Um, President Nixon got implicated as well after the grand juries convened and there were special prosecutors that were assigned. Um, all of Nixon's top aides in the White House were implicated in perjury and obstructing justice as the news started to get tightened. Hang on, somebody's not. No, thank you. I'm good. That was so nice. Actually, I need more lotion. Psych. <laughs> that was a psych. I got, I got some. Uh, I got you. All right, sweet, sweet. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So then it came out that Nixon, in just an all-time dumbass move, had secretly taped all of his conversations in the Oval Office. So Nixon was a big – he was a big uh, blackmail guy. So he would he would always like to have information on people. So he would record everything. So that's why when you look at, like, the Nixon tapes – there's just a bunch of stuff with most of the most of the swear words are like blacked out on him, but <clears throat> he implicated himself in basically everything bad that he ever did, which is just he's he was the John Morant of presidents. He left like a paper trail <laughs> behind of all of his crimes. Just <laughs> turn off the on. tapes. Yeah, just always on IG live. Huh? Yeah, he was always going live. <laughs> Nixon, you'd probably have hoes over the White House and be like, you got to check, check this out. Listen listen to what I think. <laughs> listen to what Kissinger told me earlier tonight. <laughs> um, and then Kissinger was like, Mr. President, we have to stop recording things live. He's like, how are the hoes going to know, Henry? <laughs> how are they going to know I got the I got this A-bomb? I got <laughs> B-52 is out your asshole, Harry. Uh, anyways... There was a, a battle for the tapes once they found out that he had all the tapes. And Nixon appointed this dude named Archibald Cox. Bad name. <laughs> people had people had fucked up names back. Archibald Cox? Aren't aren't you bald Cox? Was the guy's name. He was a, a special prosecutor that was hired to investigate Watergate. And the special prosecutor requested that the president turn over nine specific tapes. And the Senate Watergate Committee joined his request. You know who was on that Senate Watergate Committee as an assistant, Big T? Um, Senate Committee in the 70s, <laughs> Biden? No, not on the actual committee, but like as a lawyer helping the Watergate Committee. Oh, Hillary. <clears throat> Hillary, yep. This, go, this goes way back. Yep. Stinks to high heaven. Yep. Also, all right, bonk me, if you will. Hillary back in the day. Yes. Bonk. Billy, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yep. Fel fellas. Yep. They were big. big what do you mean? They were, they were big. <laughs> they what, were. what was big? Her brain? No, certainly not that. Both hemispheres of her brain, Big T? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me more about what you think about Hillary. Jesus. I mean, as a as a politician, not much. But as a fox she uh, it was the 70s you know you ever she think, had to have a hook somehow <laughs> billy ever, or big t everything about going back in time like some people say like wish that they had a time machine go back kill baby hitler if you had a time machine go back to the 70s and just show hillary the night of her life i don't know man president. i'm looking at some of these 70s <laughs> <laughs> there's some of these pictures of her in the 70s very average, man. I don't, I don't see what y'all seeing. I didn't say no, she was hot. Just... No, you're 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 looking at the wrong things. Man, show me some because this looks horrible. All right, drop your hottest picture, of Hillary Clinton, in the chat. Right. Billy did that once and, and catfished me. He like they they put the Photoshop on her and she was 
dick, and it just wasn't the case. <laughs> I saw the regular picture, and I got catfish, yo. Guys are so <laughs> horny, man. Like they'll go back and they'll they'll pull up a picture of, of Hillary Clinton from 1973, and be like, you know what? I got I got like 45 minutes. What if I just made her ass nice and big? <laughs> did I get did I get misinformation by Hillary Clinton's thickness? Yeah, you got ass like. Yeah. yeah, you got catfished up. Oh you got God. you got ass fished. Ass fished. Uh, by Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Nah, be y'all bugging this. She, no. Look at this jump. Like this. Drop it, Billy. Drop it in the chat. Look at that jump. Come on. Come on, bro. What about Pelosi back in the day, Big T? Uh, no. No. I haven't seen her back in the what day, but it's a, it's an automatic no. I think she was a beauty queen. Wow. Nancy Pelosi? Yeah, Nancy Pelosi. Old pictures. There's definitely a bunch of horny horny old dudes that definitely looked at this um i guess maybe i am a horny old dude Ew. Don't, um don't there is well i'm nah, not, the, I'm not, I'm not, not yeah i'm not either. i'm not old no nah she, she wasn't still, no i typed in nancy but those young pictures and she look old still i think she was born like 40 or something yeah, I feel like yeah. if you're if you were born in that age, you like were born looking old. For sure, there was a um, there's a great great Twitter account out there. I think it's called like '80s footballers aging badly or something like that. I'm getting it a little bit wrong, but it's along those lines. Where it's a bunch of soccer players from England that played in the 1980s, and you have to guess their age. And there are these dudes that are like 23 years old that look like they're 50. No joke. Like people in the eighties were old as fuck. True. We're looking good because there's That's the British too. It's because they were smoking cigarettes. Rory McElroy. That man is like thirty two years old. He looked like fifty, dog. No, he looks like a Look. like a young dude. Oh, I think he's quite strapping. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Quite strong. Nah, Rory geez. doesn't look uh, old. Google Rory McIlroy, bro. I don't have to. <laughs> Mad Dog, I'd, I'd like to know the difference between handsome and strapping. Uh, he's from Europe. That's strapping? Yeah. Even though he's not like okay. English, I feel like that's more of an English word. Than the, Bruh. But I, I love Rory. This looks like a young man, Big T. I, he, does, he does not look 50. No. This man's 32 years old, bro. If you told me he was 27, I'd believe it. What? Yeah. I don't think Rory looks old at all. This dude looks 45 right here. Uh -uh. Y'all are No. Well, also, you have to remember, they're in the sun a lot. Dogs. What are you guys saying? The English are never in the sun. This man's 27. You ever seen hair like that on a 50-year-old? He's Irish one. Fuck the hair. Look at the skin, bro. I've seen dudes lose hair in high school. He's got some sunburns. He plays golf a lot. Exactly. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, well, bottom line is Hillary Clinton had had some good years in her. I think we did. You see the that. picture I sent to the group? That one wasn't that good. <laughs> the dress, was, the I dress think. is. I see what you're getting at with the dress, Billy. She's she's shown some so, some shoulders. She was so. a comely lass. Oh, <laughs> twenty seven. Twenty. Yeah, what that word. Comely. You never heard comely? I, I don't know. I think you should look at more twenty seven year olds, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 27, <laughs> but I look very young. Uh, McKenzie, did you date Rory McIlroy? Oh, 100. percent Exactly. He met his. Oh, I'm not his, saying he's not cute or not. What about if well, he was that's... poor? Yeah. <laughs> that's the question. Well, yeah, that's. I think he's cute. <laughs> he's cute, but he has appeal because he's a professional athlete. Yeah. That's he's kind of like a chipmunk. <laughs> he's also Irish, so that. Mm -hmm. Helps too. Mm -hmm. Northern, Northern Irish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has an. So, first on this show, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Back, back to back to Watergate. Yeah. Back to Watergate. Uh, so Archibald Cox, he was the special prosecutor, and he was hired to investigate the entire Watergate affair. And then um, Archibald Cox was like, "Yo, you got to turn over all these tapes that you got. If you have 
if you have tapes, we have to investigate them. And Nixon said, no, I'm not doing it. And the Watergate committee issued a subpoena and took the president to court. And the judge said the president must turn over the tapes. And Nixon still refused. He claimed executive privilege, which I, I still don't really know what executive privilege means. Just like, oh, I don't have to because I'm president, basically. And then on October 20th, Nixon ordered the attorney general to fire Cox. So um, Cox was an independent special prosecutor, was not hired by Nixon, didn't like hire him with the power to fire him. Once you hire a special prosecutor, they no longer report to you. And then he told the attorney general, you have to fire him. And uh, the attorney general refused. He resigned. Then the deputy refused and resigned. And then Robert Bork, who was the solicitor general, that was the next person in line, followed Nixon's orders to fire Cox. And he abolished the special prosecutor's office, effectively ending the investigation. That was the Saturday night massacre that you hear people talk about, where uh, Nixon was telling his two attorney generals Attorneys general, excuse me, that's always a weird thing to say. Attorneys general to fire the guy that was investigating him. Two people rather quit than follow through. And then Nixon kind of worked his way down the line until he found somebody that was going to agree with him and fire the special prosecutor. And so then everybody was like, yo, you got to impeach this guy. He's out of pocket. And um, then there were 22 bills that were introduced calling for Nixon's impeachment in the House of Representatives. So then Nixon appointed a new special prosecutor, Leon Jaworski, and told people, guess what? I'm going to comply with the subpoena. I'm turning things over. So he turned over the tapes, and it turns out that two of the nine tapes were missing. So he only turned out over seven of the nine tapes. And then on one of the ones that he did turn over, there was an 18 minute gap in the other tape, which he just had erased. So then Nixon's secretary said that she accidentally caused the gaps in it. But then the judge recommended that the grand jury investigate her for unlawful destruction of evidence. Um, so the House started to investigate if there were grounds for impeachment. And uh, on March 1st, 1974, the grand jury indicted seven of Nixon's top aides and named President Nixon as an unindicted co-conspirator. And then there was a trial that was set for September. And uh, then the special prosecutor served a subpoena for 64 more tapes. And then Nixon said, I'm not giving you 64 more tapes. And then it went back to the court where they tried to argue executive privilege, confidential communications, and that Nixon doesn't have to turn over all this stuff. And the court said, yeah, tough shit. You have to turn them over. And then after that, Nixon turned over those tapes, but his fate was sealed. There was one of the tapes uh, that showed that clearly had Nick that Nixon had lied to the public and obstructed justice on the tape. Nixon and Halderman discussed the hush money and Nixon told Halderman to ask the CIA to call the FBI and say that we wish for the country don't go any further into this case, period. Hang on. He said, say that we wish for the country that we don't go into this further in any case, period. And then Nixon's um, allies in Congress turned against him. And it was very obvious that he had lost all support and that he was going to get impeached and then he was going to get convicted. And then he announced that he was going to resign. And Gerald Ford said, I'll do it. And Gerald Ford stepped up and, and he became president. So that is kind of how it all ended. Basically, Nixon just kept lying and lying and lying until he reached a point where he couldn't lie anymore about anything. And then he was like, fuck it, I'm out. Peace. I'm really and then he gave that yeah. I'm really surprised he resigned, actually. Cause it, it seems like he would have just kept fighting it until he got impeached be like dare them to impeach him. I guess he didn't yeah. want to be I, what's the difference in being impeached or having resigned? I mean, I guess that's true. Like, I think our politicians used to have a little bit more shame where they didn't want to disgrace the office. So it's like, I'd rather quit than, than lose. I don't yeah. know. That's but, a good question because a guy that, that fought that hard, you would think that he would keep fighting until the end. Right. I, I also um, would love to have been able to, have been alive during this because I'm very curious what 
a how a story like this was consumed in the media in the 70s when there were five tv channels yeah yeah it is kind of interesting to think about like the the fact that they broke into their opponent's hotel room and tried to plant bugs and shit that doesn't seem like the type of action that would bring down an entire presidency but he kind of made it worse for himself by just continuing to lie about stuff and don't get me wrong it's like a weird thing for him to be like have his fingerprints all over like a break-in it, it shows <laughs> like just the kind of guy that he was but um it's not like a massive massively threatening crime is it i don't know maybe it is uh, it was bad i mean probably if he doesn't have shit recording everything in the oval office he never resigns for sure yeah yeah, never videotape or, or tape record your crimes. That's a, a good thing to remember. And then a few years later in 1977, I guess that would be probably, what, how many years? Five. A bunch of years later. Five years later. Um, Nixon sat down with, was it David Frost? Yeah, it was David Frost and did the, the Frost-Nixon interview. They made a movie about it a couple of years ago. And in the interview, uh, basically, Richard Nixon said, like, I didn't commit any crimes because when the president does it, it's not illegal. Which is a baller thing to say. It is. (laughs) It is. He said that he, so Nixon said that the president could act illegally in certain situations if it's in the best interest of the nation or something. But basically that's, that's Nixon saying like, if I personally don't like it, I can break the law because I'm president. So there was like the anti-war groups that were going on at the time, a bunch of protests. Nixon hated hippies. And so in his mind, he was like, you know, if I can, if I can fuck these, if I can fuck these grass smoking do-gooders over, then that's in the best interest of our nation. So in his own mind, he thought to himself, yeah, I can break the law. So he goes, when, well, when the president does it, that means that it's not illegal by definition. I mean, he's not wrong in a lot of cases. Yeah, you can you can find justification for anything. That's why you have a, a big group of lawyers around you whenever you make a decision. It's like, can we justify this? Find a way. And if you can argue it that you are justified, then it's almost like, okay, well, we have an argument prepared. Good luck spending the money and the resources to prove that what I did was illegal. Yeah. So then Nixon died, and that's the end of that <laughs> chapter. Can I be dumb for a second? How did Nixon die? If I were to guess, like, I don't know. I actually, I did not look look this up off the top of my head. I'm going to say stroke. Okay. It was a stroke. Let's go. On April twenty I second, mean, nineteen ninety four. R.I.P. But um, also, I nailed that one. You did. I feel like if you have, yeah. what? do you think he felt guilt over that, or do you think he was kind of like, yeah, no, I could have done whatever I wanted. No, I didn't feel guilty. No. no. He probably felt pissed off that people investigated him. Yeah. Right. He kind of seems like the guy that doesn't love taking blame. Yeah. If I was Nixon, honestly, what I would have done, I would have just, I would have set those tapes on fire and be like, I don't have them. I don't know where they went. Created the EPA. Did he? Uh, That's what I'm reading. Yeah. All right. Shout out Nixon. What else? Let's 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 tell both sides of, of Richard Milhouse Nixon, which is a great middle name. Um, kind of some, what were kind of some lib accomplishments. Uh, what did he accomplish? Succeeded in persuading Congress to exempt nine million low-income Americans from paying income taxes while raising levies on the rich, increasing Social Security benefits, and creating the Environmental Protection Agency. All right, shout out Nixon. A skilled actor in foreign affairs also, says Politico. <laughs> yeah. He did go to China. He was like the first president to go to China in a long time, right? Yeah. Yeah, shook hands with Chinese president. All right. Shout out old Tricky Dick. Anything else we want to add to the Watergate scandal? Uh, the tapes with him and... Uh... The conversations between him and uh, Reagan shows that both of the motherfuckers was racist. Not surprised. What was that? Proof. 
What they say? It's like calling. It's called calling black people monkeys and shit like that. Sex and shit. A whole bunch of shit. It's it's on the shit. The audio's on YouTube. You can, you can check it out. I'm gonna have to listen to that. Uh, yeah. There there are still a bunch of Nixon tapes that exist of him saying like I, I've heard of him saying pretty bad stuff. I didn't know that specifically. Um, yeah. Just gonna look up Nixon tapes worst parts and then we'll see if there are any good quotes that we can. We can end. Oh, wow. I'm yeah. reading the quotes. Uh, Those are something. I actually, yeah, big, that, that does not surprise me from Nixon. That does surprise me from Ronald Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. All that shows, Big T, is you've ever actually, actually looked into Reagan. He was a piece of shit. They tout him as the best Republican president, but he was a racist just like the rest of the motherfuckers. Racist, but. yeah, he was an old guy in the eighties. But uh, that does th those are some bad quotes. Wait, wait, wait. Can, can we? They can most we, of them like that to this day. They still like we, you know, we call us woke because we say motherfuckers is racist, but we tell you they fucking racist. They racist. Most of the motherfuckers are bad racist. Though. Let wait, wait. Can we, can we read one? Because I haven't. I can't look at it right now. I mean, I'm not going right. to read it. I think Nixon was like talking about Indian women, too. Like He was saying like they're the most uh, unattractive women on planet Earth. Like, that type of, just random-ass <laughs> racist shit, bro. He's like yeah. random-ass he, uh He was going to revive the House Committee on Un-American Activities when the Pentagon Papers leaked. And he was going to investigate government whistleblowers, or in his words, going after all these Jews. Just find one that is a Jew, will you? So that he could then blame it all on Jewish people. Mm hmm. He also said, I would have made a good pope. <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny that if Nixon would have been a good pope. <laughs> uh, but you remember one other fun fact that we learned about Richard Nixon a couple, uh, like six months ago? Richard Nixon wanted to be a rapper. Say what? Yeah. He said, I often thought that if there had been a good rap group around in those days, I might have chosen a career in music instead of politics. What what year was this? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I'm just picturing Richard Nixon on stage in like an Adidas jumpsuit and a cougar, a cougar hat. Thick gold chain. Rope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tricky Dick. That would be that'd be a fire rap name. Well, Honestly, the presidency and, you know, being a huge rap superstar probably had some similar perks that he wanted to seek. Like what? You know, fame, yeah. drug use. No, he was not. I, Richard Nixon probably did like old school amphetamines. Yeah, old school amphetamines, pop. probably pop pills and. Uh, probably was like in pursuit of a lot of women. The presidents were definitely Clinton was just the first to get caught in the mainstream. Yeah, or I mean, if you're if you're Ronald, like why go out when you got the best thing going at home? You know. Well, like think about this. Like Nixon was probably like he probably saw like the you know Sir Mix a lot. Baby got back and was like shit. Like I was the president. <laughs> I was the president of the United States, and I didn't get anything close to that music video. That was in the nineties, wasn't it? Yeah, Sir Mix was in the nineties. But what, when what did if, he die? I don't know. But what, what if there were some tapes out there, like of the tapes that went missing? It was just his, his like mixtape, and he was embarrassed <laughs> that that Congress was going to listen to it. It's not ready yet. It's not ready yet. The hook's not there. <laughs> We got to get it mixed and mastered first. It's just a rough draft. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that was Watergate. I hope you guys enjoyed the recap. Hopefully, we didn't fuck up too much stuff on that. Do we want to do voicemails? What is up, Macrodosing crew? This is Jimbo um, calling in from San Diego. Uh, first off, just want to say love the show. Uh, PFT area and Big T. Oh, shit, I got a text. Um, and then, of course, how can you forget Billy and Mad Dog? Um, Mad Dog is a shit. Um, anyway, so my question for y'all is, have you ever saved anyone's life or 
been in a situation where <clears throat> the person you were with or a person that you saw was in danger and you saved them? Shout out in the comments. Okay, good question. Uh, there was one time I, so I, I saved a kid's life and he was trying to get on the bench press and he had like <laughs> 245 pounds on there. And God bless him. This, this kid was trying so true. hard and he couldn't, he couldn't get it up. And he was about to fall and crush him on his windpipe. And I was standing behind him. I was like, I have to say, I have to save this boy. And I reached down, I mustered up all the strength that I could find. And I basically curled 245 pounds, just like the adrenaline goes through, you know, like I'm normally not Mama capable bear. of doing that. Mama bear. It's like <laughs> mom, grandma lifting up a car to save a, a baby from underneath. I lifted this thing up, and by the grace of God, I re-racked the weight on my own. And um, the kid never thanked me for it, but it's not—you don't do something like that for people to be like, "Thank you for saving my life." You do it because it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was that was one time. Amen. Yeah. yeah. What's that Amen. boy up to now? Oh God <laughs> knows. I don't. I I don't know. I hope he's making something of his life. <laughs> Shout out to you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> uh i can't say that i've ever saved anybody's life other than like helping them like in a very real way uh like physically actually saving a life. i don't think i've ever done that yeah my answer is really no. boring i don't uh i i can't recall a time where that's happened well uh i was a lifeguard once it sounds like bullshit already. It's not bullshit. It well, I didn't really save anyone's life. I had you, you Wendy Prefercorn somebody dog? No, no. I, I one time an old lady fell asleep floating and uh jumped in and woke her up and she wasn't dead, she just was asleep. <laughs> Great story. Thank you for your service, Billy. Yeah. All right, anybody has anybody saved anybody? My dad saved three lives. That doesn't surprise me. What yeah. did he do? <laughs> He's pulled someone out of a burning car. Uh, he gave CPR to someone who had a heart attack at a Christmas party. Uh, da, 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 I believe it. And I forget the last one. He's the man. Yeah. And something about there was like a fire. Like a like a house fire. Oh, yeah. He was a landlord in college. Um, for an apartment building, and one of the apartments caught on fire, and he pulled the whole family out. Wow, your your dad? Yeah. He saved two people. Three. Three people. Yeah. Is this true? Because you know, you know, parents' stories over over the years yeah. get more and more exaggerated. Like, like my dad survived a shark attack, and now that I'm an adult, I don't believe that shit at all. Right. No, <laughs> and trust me, like my dad loves to make stories more entertaining, but my mom was there for all three and she um got you. Vouches for him. Yeah. There's this story about my dad that I wouldn't believe unless my mom vouched for it. We was at the uh we, we I wasn't born yet. It was my mom, my dad, and I think it was just my sister at the time. My my brother may have been an infant. But uh she tells this story great, but she says he was at we they was at the fair, like the fairgrounds. And she was, and they was like, though these these three dudes like circled them, and they were like hitting on my mom, like on some creep shit. And then my dad was like, listen, man, we don't want no trouble. Like she was trying to, he was trying to like defuse the situation. Like we don't want no problems. And one of the dudes pushed my dad. Uh, my dad's six four, though. All right, so shout out to Aaron Sad for saving lives. <laughs> we lost him. Oh no! One time, I pulled a dude who fell between two I boats. I knew you were going. I was going to remind you of this because you've told this story. I forgot before. about the story, and he almost got crushed. And I like pulled him out of the water, and it was like a deadlift. It was that was pretty sick. That was actually saved him because he could have gotten crushed. All right, um, I I think we're good for today. We can save that voicemail for next time. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. All right, all right, because I think Aaron dropped out. I think his Wi-Fi got got shut on. All right. Well, thank, thank you guys for listening to Macro Dosing. We're going to see you all next week, next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Next. No, we'll, we'll yes, you guys you will. in yeah. two weeks. 
Good point. Good point. Two weeks. My bad. I forgot about celebrating the, the birth of our great nation next week. We're going to see you guys in two weeks. We're going to miss you guys. We love yeah. you guys. Well, actually, I might, put, I might put something out. I might put out a little little extra dose <laughs> next week. Well, it's going to be a limited drop. Okay. Well, 4th okay. of July, we will also have something dropping. We'll have an interview. Yes, we will. We'll have an interview coming out next week. Mm -hmm. um, but we will be back for a full episode the Tuesday after next week. So just a, and get ready. It's gonna be, it's gonna be some awesome episodes with a lot of prep, a lot of great stuff coming. Okay. All right. Sounds good, Billy. All right. Love I you guarantee guys. it. It's a Billy guarantee. <laughs>